the program are we sending out anything to uh, sort of a give uh, you know for a feedback from the colleagues yeah 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 so there will be there will be feedback uh, so it's so i will speak about it in one of the sessions but the intention from our perspective is uh, it, it's quite a long feedback form and so right. based around uh, our summative informative assessments as well because it's sure. taking, giving us feedback but it's also talking about what uh, colleagues feel the peer review was like uh, in particular what we kind of felt about uh, the, the summative assessment as well so you know all of those things yeah and you know sort of what they want to learn more or which yeah, yeah. area they want to focus more yeah we'll actually so because the course is actually 12 weeks but then they go into a consolidation phase so mm -hmm. they actually go out at the end of the 12 weeks well whilst hoping that you know they'll be able to send us the feedback within the consolidation phase which then yeah. if there's anything with the missed out we can actually cover it in the consolidation phase yes so the entire intention is i mean the, the the colleagues have that ability to between 3 and 6 months give the mcq mm -hmm. how how able they feel and really yeah. they kind of are able to complete the mcq then we kind of break the mm -hmm. cord and then they kind of uh they become more independent so you know hopefully by 6 months my experience is most people you know having done the echocardiography mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, two years you know every tuesday and thursday with dr suryavanshi i mean who's absolutely amazing i i, I think you know yeah uh, yeah it's it's uh, his teaching style as well is absolutely amazing so it's 3 o'clock and we've got mm -hmm. Uh, everybody here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start now when i look at the list i have got mm -hmm. to present first of all i think i've got dr zaridin if i'm not mistaken yeah fantastic so dr zaridin uh, i'm just going to press record very quickly uh please go ahead very happy to uh, for you to share your screen thank you so uh, uh yeah first of all the um, good evening and uh, and good afternoon uh, and thanks very much for the opportunity i'm 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 just going to present this. I call this as case two because at case one, I was so excited I forgot to uh, actually mark it with the uh, L's and R's, and that's why it became useless. So this will be case two, but it's case one for presentation. No problems at all. I was going to say, don't feel worried about not marking, because even that can be included in your peer review. There's no criticism at all. Because uh, so you know, if you want to share that case today as well, please by all means, we'd be very happy to see it. Thank you. thank you very much i'll see um th this case actually is a is a is a is a case series uh i mean it's a case but it it's a case follow up but uh, before i get started i'm just going to introduce you to our machine it's a sonosite and this is this is the uh, screen that will greet you once you start so I'll give you the transducer uh, an exam type so usually lung is listed under the uh, uh, hockey stick um uh, probe um so it's easy you don't need to play much with the setting you just choose lung and then you start scanning by going here um so the uh, this first case is a preterm baby who is 31 weeks now he's actually coming up to 3 weeks of age so he was born 3 weeks ago um so that's a section he had uh, his mom had two doses of antenatal steroids uh, so a full course but he was not in a good shape when he came um and his birth weight was as you can see just under 1.4 kilos uh he was started as usual on high flow nasal cannula 6 liters but his fio2 kept kept going up until 60% at that point he was intubated and ventilated that was 3 uh, hours of age uh, we were all taken by the fact that he is unexpectedly behaving badly given his degree of prematurity and his weight so he got uh, himself 
uh, intubated and ventilated, and he, he earned uh, a first dose of surfactant. And then a second dose of surfactant was given uh, later. And in fact, he had three doses of surfactant, which is not our usual practice. Um, and he was really getting worse, um, muscle relaxed and sedated, um, with increase in ventilatory settings. And he ended up uh, on uh, oscillation for three days. Uh, he is currently still ventilated, believe it or not, at the age of three weeks, which is very, very unusual nowadays. Uh, but he also has a, a significant PDA, which was, uh, it was 3.5, but he was actually, he was having an echo today, and it was still uh, four millimeter with volume overload, um, bearing in mind that he's had two courses of paracetamol. Amazing. So now I'm just going to go through the uh, series of his lung ultrasound. Uh, this is done. This was done on the second of the second, which means it was ten days ago, when he was about um, ten days of age. Beautiful. This is R, this is R one. Yeah. Uh, and as I could see, the uh, blue line is. Uh, a bit hazy, um, not nicely defined. There is plural sliding, though. Uh, and the, all these scans, to bear in mind, all these scans were done when he is ventilated uh, yep. conventionally, after the oscillation is is, is, is finished. Um, and uh, and it's, it's, it's in, in my view, R1 is predominantly uh, a, a B-profile uh, scan. Um, almost homogeneously. So um, if we move to R2, again, there are some uh, comet uh, uh, artifacts in addition to the plural sliding, but there is still, there is there is some uh, A profile that I could see on the right of the screen. So- I agree with that completely, to, yeah. Yeah. Then I'm just gonna move to the, uh, Next ones. Yep. Uh, so that's R3. Um, he, he is nursed uh, at the time of the scan. He was nursed prone. So, uh, so he, sorry, supine. So there are no, uh, no R5s and R6s. Throughout. Oh. Yeah, so this is R3. And again, it is a reflection of really, or a continuation in my view of R1 uh, with again, uh, confluent uh, B profile picture with plural sliding still, but it's not as crispy as you would like it to be. And then uh, for, uh, again, it is indicating the predominancy of the B profile still. Lovely, that's beautiful. We'll have a look at your left-sided images as well, and then we'll come back, yeah. Okay. So, this is L1. Beautiful. Very nice. I, I, I think my compliments to you for managing to get the heart out of the way. That's an amazing image. Thank you. It's a, uh, it's a hockey stick. I mean, the heart will be popping in and out every now and then, but I was just doing my best to avoid it. Um, I'll get away from it. Here, here we go. In L2, it was uh, uh, inevitable. So the heart is, is, especially that this baby, as I said, has got a very large uh, duct and... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Good decent size. Yeah. Yep. Uh, again, gonna move to the next one. Uh, no, I think is that next one. Uh, that's R one. This is baby two B. So me. Ah, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, I think I've missed the. I've missed the. No uh, the L three and L four. Sorry about that. Not a problem. That's that's okay. So. Could we go this, back to your this, initial images? Okay, That's but, uh, because we will be moving to a different date, uh, three days later. So yeah, do you yeah. want to go back to... Uh, let's have a look at these images, because I think what we would like in our mind is to form a clinical picture of what we think might be wrong with the baby. Yeah. So it would be really helpful. Uh, so let's just have a look at your first yeah. two images. Uh, just a few questions. I mean, at this stage, how long has the baby been ventilated? Uh, at this at about about uh, eleven days. Okay, uh, has been ventilated for eleven days, and the age of the baby is three weeks. About, 
no, no, it, it's about 11 days. It's 11 the, current days. Age, the current age of the baby is about three weeks, but this sure. or these scans were done when he was about 11 days of age. Okay, okay, that's great. So just image profile with the clinical history, very nice. So can I just say really good depth, five centimeters. Uh, I think what you've got is an absolutely beautiful machine. So you don't really with the Sonocyte have to uh, fix the focus at the plural margin. Very similar to the GE machine, it tends to fix its pixels uniformly across the entire image. And uh, that is the beauty of using the Sonocyte. So you've got, you know, uh, at least one, two, three intercostal spaces, three ribs. Uh, you've got a plural line that looks very irregular. And what you've classically got is you've got B lines. And as Nadia was mentioning yesterday with, uh, with everybody, new machines tend to have filters which will tend to filter artifact out. So it kind of attenuates the B lines, but actually in terms of being able to diagnose a B profile, I think all of you will agree. I mean, this is a virtual uh, kind of white appearance to the entire lung with the B lungs that have basically coalesced together. Uh, so the pleura being irregular, you've got the slightly irregular appearance below the pleura. Those are subplural consolidations. So that, that appearance that you would label as RDS, uh, you know, in a baby uh, is there. But obviously, again, you're clinically correlating. This baby is well down. So what you're really seeing is sequelae of RDS. You know, for a baby who's still ventilated 11 days, I think the key question you're asking is, is this evolving chronic lung disease in a kind of a, a baby who's not so preterm? So that's one possibility. The other thing is obviously making sure that you don't have evidence of infections. Certainly over here, I don't see any areas that give me a firm feel for consolidation. There's an artifactual line running in between the screen. So horizontally, do you want to just put your uh, arrow on that? It, it just waves. That's it. it so that's not consolidation in my mind. I think that's just a little bit of artifact that you see over there. Mm -hmm. But uh, what you can classically see is a kind of a whiteout with irregular pleura, which is blurred and which has got subtural consolidations. And then if you go to R2, and this is very important, and this is where I come back to the, the kind of uh, uh, conclusion that, you know, a, a lot has been said about double lung points and their uh, kind of absence in other conditions other than TTN. But the fact is surfactant treated babies and babies who have lung disease, which is getting better, will have differential aeration. And what you're looking at classically is that the right-sided lung in the lower half is actually better aerated than the right upper lung. Now, again, what I'd say is uh, where, where there's no consolidation, but if you have slightly better aerated right-sided lung at the bottom, you know, one of the questions I always ask myself in these babies is, did, did this baby get a little bit more or better surfactant down the right lower lung early on? And it's inevitable. You can have the tube in the right place. And I often see this appearance in extremely preterm babies. Early clinical course, the baby had two doses of surfactant or was CPAP throughout and then got intubated? No, no, uh, actually had the uh, high flow for only three hours and then intubated straight away sure, because sure. of the bad um, bad gases and uh, bad clinical condition, blood, bad gases and FiO2 reaching up to 60%. So he he had actually three doses of surfactant in different time intervals, which will uh, reflects the how desperate we were. We don't usually give three doses of surfactant. Absolutely. He's an exception. Sure. Uh I think again, beautiful images, good depth. You can see the, you know, the the kind of, and I would say the artifactual anatomy all the way through. Good sliding, irregular pleura, comet tails with V lines, but definite evidence of aeration, in particular in the lower half of the lung fields. Uh, so beautiful images. I mean, I I would I would say that uh, in terms of image optimization. I wouldn't stress too much. I think, you know, sometimes there's a lot of anxiety in the group. Oh, my images don't look so good. I am not worried as long as I can, and you can get the right clinical information from the images. And I think these images give me good amounts of clinical information. Uh, Abhijit, would you like to come in? Um, yes, Alok. Uh, we have, again, uh, compliment uh, on the images, Charitin. Excellent images. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I would like to know uh, uh, in this scenario, uh, what was the pressure you were having on the ventilator? Um, he, uh, at, at that point, his, his uh, inspiratory pressure was uh, 24. 
Uh, so 24 right. over 5, that was the setting. Right. And in the due course after this, um, uh, obviously, we're going to come to the, you know, uh, three days afterwards um, scans. But did you have to go up on the pressures by any means? Um, uh, initially, yes, uh, until we reached, obviously, uh, uh, a pressure of uh, it, it wasn't me who was looking at him to start with. It was my colleague. So he reached mm -hmm. up to a 26 pressure. And then at that point, because of the, there is no, he's not getting anywhere. He decided right. to go and oscillate him. Yeah. Right. So um, uh, the point I'm trying to make here is it, it can be different scenarios. Of course, this on the day one of uh, life, you know, RDS uh, subclural consolidations um, would indicate more towards the RDS. Now, given 11 days uh, of life and on ventilator, um, uh, so if I do an image uh, scan and I see this kind of an image, the things comes to my mind is, are we giving adequate pressure to the uh, through the ventilator? Number one, number two, preterm babies day eleven of life has the duct opened up, uh, you know, flooding the lung. Um, uh, if they flood the lung, uh, you can see different, you know, differential kind of a uh, picture there, you know, um, uh, what do you call this uh, AB profile, uh, if you say so. Um, uh, <clears throat> more of the because b lines basically means is you have more fluid in the lung basically isn't it so um uh, duct is uh, the second consideration i will take um yeah uh, uh, but otherwise um beautiful images um and uh, um uh, will be interested to see how after three days it looks like and what kind of an intervention you did within those three days to uh, you know uh, get the differential um uh, images on the day three. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, uh, I'm just gonna. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm, I'm just gonna move to um, the, the three days later. That's here. Um, yeah. That's again R one, R two. Um, the, the, to be honest with you, um, there might be a marginal improvement. This is my interpretation. There might be a marginal improvement in the aeration of the lung with the with an eye of fate, perhaps a bit of uh, A profile here and there. But the, again, it is predominantly B profile, uh, maybe mm -hmm. not as affluent as it used to be. Uh, the, the baby at this point, he is two weeks of age. He's got a large duct. He received five days of paracetamol, didn't touch the duct at all. Um, his FiO2 has improved. So his requirement of FiO2 was uh, initially 40. <coughs> now he is anywhere between uh, 25 to 30 uh, percent. That's why I was reluctant to increase to go up on the pressure as long as we have, uh, have, have are having good FiO2 requirement and uh, very good blood gases. And it was leaning more on the duct being, being really the main contributory factor at this stage to his RDS for him to get stuck on the ventilator. I think, again, uh, very nice images, uh, good depth. Uh, you've got a prudal line. And for everybody, I think what I, I just want to emphasize in this slide is the prudal line actually looks continuous and then looks irregular. And one of the questions that I think Kirti asked yesterday is, is my plural line abnormal? And really, it's the difference between the lung being inflated during inspiratory cycle of the ventilator versus the lung being deflated in the expiratory cycle. So when the plural line is regular, it's probably an expiratory phase where you have, you know, and what you can see is that in the inspiratory phase, the upper half, your A lines become more prominent, both in R1 and R2. So what it's basically reflecting at this particular point, and this is something to clinically correlate, is better aeration during the inspiratory cycle of ventilation. And then really the, the A-lines tend to disappear a bit between the expiratory cycle. And you, you kind of in the subplural region have small areas where there are breakages in the pleura. And that is actually a reflection of the fact that you've, lo you've lost some volume during the expiratory phase. So in itself, it's not pathological. And for me, that is not shed sign. This is an important thing that I want to emphasize. Some people might think that in the middle of R1, would you like to just point it out, Dr. Zaruddin? I'd be so yeah. great. Yeah. You. Thank you. Just there. Yeah. That that might be shed sign. It's not. Because actually, when you look at the inspiratory cycle, the plura becomes irregular and it disappears. And what you have is a predominantly B profile in both these images. 
And again, it comes back to what Abhijit says. And I mean, at the moment, what we're doing is we're giving you different patterns. So this entire month till the end of February, you're, you're going through pattern recognition, which you can get the same pattern on day one, which will give you a different clinical interpretation based on your clinical correlation. And you'll get a similar pattern on day 12 or 13. And the key thing is if you've been following up, there's certain differentials that you'd keep in mind. Now, that'll be different for an unintubated baby and different for an intubated baby. And for an unintubated baby who's getting more tachypneic, say, you might find that there might be elements of infection. Uh, there might be a duct. They might actually, from your perspective, be a situation with the baby having evolving chronic lung disease. You know, other differentials to kind of think about in that situation are kind of collapse, consolidation, secondary to aspiration. You know, these near preterm babies where feeds are being built up will often have micro aspirations. Now in the intubated baby, you can have all of these conditions, but the other thing that you must consider is how your ventilation affects the actual images. This is crucial. And the reason I say that is you're doing a lung ultrasound at one point of time. You're looking at this lung at one point of time. Uh, this is not a serial kind of 12 hourly kind of a lung ultrasound. So really your ventilation can actually impact the, the lung ultrasound appearance, as can the position of your tube. And a small thing, like if I'm doing serial scans every day and I want to kind of have a look at those images, I will go back and always make sure, well, is the tube still in the same position? Uh, it's, it's an opportunity here because actually if you find, you know, that R1 is completely consolidated and collapsed as opposed to the previous scan images, has the tube gone down? You know, is it something that I need to look at when I look at the suprasternal views? But in terms of my interpretation at the moment, I would say that a little bit of better aeration in the upper half, like you said, uh, definitely a B profile in the lower halves, uh, but that plural line is similar. And I just wonder whether you've got, I mean, the, the possibilities are again, the duct and evolving lung disease. But in terms of the images, I have uh, no critique. I mean, these are nice images. Well done, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Abhijit, anything that you'd like to add? No, I think uh, that's it, Alok. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the things we are, we are also interested in. There are a lot, of, a lot of papers also coming up now. You know, um, uh, lung ultrasound aided lung. Uh, sorry, uh, yes, ultrasound aided lung recruitment. Yeah. Where um, where they go on increasing the pressures, looking at this um, scan. And if I have to tell you in the studies what they have done is this is they call it as you know um, uh, sort of. Uh, uh, opening pressure and closing pressure. So uh, I believe that this is somewhere near the closing pressure. So, um, uh, you know, they, they go up to the point where they can see most of the A lines and they retract a pressure of one or two by then just to get the B lines and stop there. Um, uh, but again, this is uh, in its infancy. So uh, I'll not advocate <laughs> doing that at the moment. But this, this sort of gives you an idea that, you know, sometimes um, the pressures are inadequate. Sometimes it's the duct that's flooding the lung. And if you see this kind of image on day one, that's have completely different connotation. I, I guess I will do this in the advanced course, uh, advanced lung course, uh, lung ultrasound course. Next time. <laughs> uh, we'll have, we'll have a good six months. Trust me. You will, you, all of you, all of you will go very far in the six months. Not to worry. Uh, Thank you. Carry on. Uh, I'm just going to quickly, sorry, I took a lot of time. That's right. I think they're nice images, good for the group to see, yeah. Uh, so th this is uh, R3 uh, and R4. Um, to be honest, um, I, I didn't see three days down the line, I didn't see much of a change in this uh, baby's images. Um, uh, as I said earlier, I'm hopeful. That there might be some marginal improvement, but uh, I feel that they are pretty much the same with the with regard to aeration and uh, uh, an RDS. So it's still the plural line, line similar comments, uh, B profile mainly uh, on both R3 and R4, I guess. Is your ductal profile changing in this period with treatment? I'm just curious, just when no, you not. assess your. Not really. The you mean the PDA? Yeah, N not at all. The uh, five days of paracetamol didn't touch it at all. Okay, and I mean, I'm assuming at this point this baby's about two and a half, maybe coming to three weeks, just under three weeks. 
uh, at this point, uh, just over two weeks. Of just age. over two weeks. Okay. Yeah. I mean, one of the options in that situation uh, is, I think in particular, if you have left atrial and left ventricular volume loading, is giving the baby uh, a, a reasonable dose of frisomide and just doing a pre and post scan and saying, now, uh, a lot of people kind of feel anxious about giving frisomide in ducks. There's one paper on 14 cases which says that it can keep the period open. It's, in my mind, a lot of rubbish. I, I think, you know, for volume loading of a heart in a baby that's ventilated, uh, a short period of improving lung compliance by offloading the LALV uh, and decreasing preload on the RV can sometimes help. Now, the reason I say that and the context in which you would be using lung ultrasound in this situation is, is disappearance, simple lung disease that you can't do anything about. You just have to gently ventilate, allow this baby to kind of proceed to a, a kind of a nutritional state that allows growth of the lungs. Or is this a duct that's contributing where the fluid is the element in the interstitial and intralobular and interlobular spaces that you could change with symphrosomide? Or as Abhijit has mentioned, is, is, is this a baby who needs more lung recruitment? And I would be very cautious of the lung recruitment study. And the reason I say that is if you've got a decent CO2, you're accepting a permissive hypercapnia, FiO2 is 30%. Then this is this is actually acceptable because what it's saying to me is that that lung is oxygenating this baby reasonably well, and you've got enough lung recruitment to actually give yourself good CO2 clearance. And the risk of wanting to achieve further lung inflation at the cost of producing visible A lines on the ultrasound will actually lead to volume trauma because you'll need higher volumes. So you will contribute indirectly to lung damage. And a, a simple example that I'll give you is very bad PIE with air trapping. I see a lot of A-line appearance. So I, I would say that, you know, that's the differentials you're thinking of, and that's how you're using lung ultrasound then to alter your management. And you might find that none of this makes any changes. And really what you're stuck with is a baby who really needs probably to get some steroids to try and get off the ventilator to help reduce lung inflammation. And uh, that is that is the challenge. And it's very similar to doing x-rays. We do x-rays at this period and actually nothing changes. You know, you have this chronic lung disease kind of an appearance where you're trying to basically gently ventilate. In terms of image critique, I think that's the really nice images, you know, good depth. Again, I just wonder whether in the lower part of the image, like there's a small area that looks a little bit dark. White, white, sorry. On, just R3. The... R3. So if you come to R3 in the middle, just whether you might, with the expiratory phase, be having a little bit of atelectasis there in that side. Uh, whether that's, I, I'd be surprised if that's a single isolated A-line, because A, it would be quite deep. It could be, and it could reflect maybe differential aeration. But experience would say, I just wonder whether there might be an element of atelectasis over there. And again, the, the way you'd, you'd, you'd find out is you could put the pressures up a little bit and repeat an ultrasound and see if that actually disappears. But this is predominantly kind of, white lung appearance. There are, as Mayank has kind of alluded to in the chat, uh, they, uh, you know, he, he clearly, you're right, that could be consolidation. The fact that it disappears, you know, during the expiratory phase means that there's an element of aeration. So it could be atelectasis and differentiating it can be a challenge. The, uh, the reason that I'm actually smiling is that uh, number one is how, how meaningful and useful having a, a feedback from experienced colleagues and uh, I, I'm really loving it uh, because uh, I probably did the same thing that you um, down your lines of thought and I'm very pleased that um, uh, I did the same thing um, because at this, at this point uh, after finishing the paracetamol course uh, I actually started this baby on a, a, a two to three day course of um, intravenous frosamide uh, and trying thinking the, the same way um, that is after a, a, a very short trial of volume guided uh, ventilation yep. trying to uh, get away from just the constant pressure and to avoid the volume trauma um, but the, the, the volume guided again uh, it's another uh, lesson to be reinforced is that it doesn't suit every baby 
And so he didn't agree with it very much. He actually, in order to achieve the tidal volume, um, you will need higher, much higher pressure. While I was settled with good gases, good FiO2, so I thought, okay, I'll just put him back to the uh, uh, SIPPV. Um, and then started a course of furosemide for three days. And then after that, there's no improvement. I have to uh, do another shorter course of paracetamol just as a last resort. And at that point, I started talking to his parents about ligation of duct. Hmm. And uh, are you able to get percutaneous ligations or would it be a surgical ligation? Uh, it will be a surgical, I'm afraid. It will be a surgical. Okay, that's all right. That's, I mean, it's, I think 90% of the world, you know, uh, is uh, going to have to have surgical ligation. So that's, yep, I, I think thought process is exactly the same. Have you got some more images or? Yeah, I, I think just in, uh, this is L3, L, uh, sorry, no, no, that's again, five. Uh, so this is uh, the L1 and L2 on the same day, although that's three days later. And I- Better aeration. You've definitely got an AV profile. And again, with inspiration, expiration, you, you can see A lines just above the heart. Uh, so yeah, and very nice images, but again, some coalescent B lines. Yeah. that become apparent when the baby uh, kind of expires. So, yeah, very nice images, yeah. And then, uh, again, L3 and L4, same day. Yeah. Uh, and then, just in the interest of time, I'll go to today's images. He's still yeah. ventilated. Yeah. He had two courses of uh, his blood yes. gases better. Uh, yep. His FO2 now can be anywhere between 22 to 25 percent. His blood gases are very, very good. Uh, still, the duct is large; it's four millimeter today. So he's still waiting to have his duct ligated. Now he's listed to have it ligated. Amazing, much better aeration. I mean, like I, I think everybody would agree that you can you can see visible A lines uh, with still a you know a dominant B profile, but much better aeration as compared to the previous R1, R2 images. Well done, sir. Yeah. So quickly to this one, uh, R3 and R4. And I mean, especially R4, very, very nice aeration. Uh, R3 mm, as well. R4. Yeah. Abhijit, uh, uh, come in. Yeah, please. Luckily, we can carry on. Yeah. So this is L1 and L2. And then L3 and L4. I, I have a feeling that the L, uh, R4 probably is better aerated than the L4. So Perhaps the right side is 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 better than the uh, left side at yeah. the lung bases relatively. Although there is a bit of a A lines appearing towards the base of the left lung, but the, the appearance of A lines in R four were more clearly delineated than the L four. Amazing, especially especially here. Yeah, completely visible. Good pleural sliding and uh, a white lung appearance. So very nice images. Yep. So just uh, as as has been uh, planned, the, the just three sam samples of his x-rays uh, on admission, that is uh, his RDS degree. And then this is uh, three days later uh, when he was oscillated. Uh, that's his chest x-ray. Uh, then this is... Uh, on the first, on the day when he had his first lung ultrasound scan, and that is, uh, uh, he is on just on back on conventional ventilation. There is a, an interesting feature here that I wanted just to share with my uh, colleagues here. That I put a long line here, and you can see that it's gone in on the uh, left side here. And I was really kind of puzzled by how do I explain this? And I spoke to the cardiologist, I couldn't find the answer myself. Left so SVC. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so he's got a, a, a left SVC. Amazing. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, my my, is there a time for a very quick last case, which would be much? Do we, 
I was going to, can we do it next time, Dr. Zaldi? No just no problem. I'd be so grateful uh, just to no allow the others. But uh, what, what I'd say is the next peer review session is this Friday with Nadia, and we'll have another peer review session on Sunday. So okay. we're having lots, we'll have three sessions this week and we'll have two next week. So okay. thank you so much. Thank do you so much save your that. logbooks and update them. And, you know, if you'd like to save your images, you can save videos by inserting object. And I'll, I'll, in the next session before Nadia starts, I'll take you to how to do it. Lovely. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. So Dr. Sharif, uh, have, is Dr. Sharif here today? Yes. yes. Beautiful. Dr. Sharif, right. thank you. Right. Right. Uh, thank you very much for your extraordinary efforts. Uh, really, um, that, that's very, very useful. And I want to thank all the faculty as well. Um, so can I just let you know, because I'm on duty and I might need, hopefully not everything stable, but it, in case they call me, uh, I'm sorry, I, I need to go in case of emergency. No problems. Okay, shall I share my screen? Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, very nice. Uh, Abhijit, I'm gonna let you crack on with this one. Yeah, no worries. So I'm gonna mute myself. Uh, right, so um, the machine that we use is a, a GE machine and the probe we use is linear one, linear probe. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, my, my first presentation. This is a case of a uh, uh, eternal baby, 39 plus two weeks, born by vaginal delivery. Mom has a GBS induced pregnancy and the baby was born uh, with a birth weight of 3.3 kilos. Uh, had thickened cornea at delivery and needed CPAP initially with um, high oxygen requirement, 60%, and then um, after CPAP, the oxygen improved. The baby was screened for suspecting infection and antibiotics stopped after 48 hours in the view of negative cultures and negative COPs. Baby went to full feeds and by breast. And by four days of age, the baby uh, was still on vacuum for respiratory distress, and the respiratory rate was more than 70, um, but um, on very low uh, parameters on the vacuum three liters and uh, very low oxygen, like no oxygen requirement, basically. So I, I did the uh, ultrasound for this baby uh, because the baby was still technic at day four, and uh, I that was the x-ray on day one so i haven't repeated that because the baby was improving clinically and uh, mm -hmm. i could see that uh, sorry about the quality of the picture but basically it's going more with ttn i could see some uh, long fissures if you agree about that uh, and the baby was clinically improving um so i, I did by uh, an ultrasound day four the good thing about this baby mom was around so she, mm -hmm. was, she was able to help me and to hold the baby for me in the six, like yeah, on the prone and a back position. So it was good. Yeah. So I um, you know, uh, I'm taking the loop on the on the machine for nearly five seconds or even more. But when I saved the images, it came like very quick, like it, it came like less than a second. So I, I'm not sure why. So I, I just wanted to ask you this question. I tried several times from different babies, but always it come like uh, less than a second. Uh, but on the machine itself, give me the whole loop of five seconds. So I'm not sure what is the reason. But I can start, uh, I'll keep pressing uh, just to show you. In the R1, I could see some, um, uh, like the plural is sliding, the plural is regular, I would say. Um, sorry, that's the R1. Uh, I can see this is, uh, this is a mainly a profile. Um, uh, even I can see common tail, uh, but, um, like, but I can't see like a complete um, B line. So it's mainly a profile. On the R2, <coughs> The same, I can see the plura is regular, uh, sliding, 
and it's uh, I can see lots of airlines. However, yeah. here I, I I don't have full explanation. I, I believe this is an artifact, but I, I'm not entirely sure what this space comes from. This one I mean, but it's mainly again a profile. Some common tales uh, here, but uh, it's mainly a profile. The third one is um, uh, this is the R three. I took your advice uh, raising the baby's arm. Uh, Mom was very helpful, and that was really helpful as well. Um, and I can see that there, there is a good sliding. There is um, mainly a profile. Yeah. Um, yeah. So going to oh, uh, this is R4 again. Laura sliding. I see some common tails here um, on the in the upper long field, but it's again mainly uh, a profile. R5. Yep. Think the baby probably start to move, but uh, from what I can see. Uh, sure. It's it's not really clear in in this view to see, but I can see it literally sliding and. Uh, I can't really remember that. Um, mm -hmm. This is uh, R6. Uh, I can see the Lura sliding, that Lura is regular, um, and I can see more airlines. Uh, however, the quality here is not great, and the gain as well. Uh, okay, so coming to the next one, this L1. Again, uh, with the little sliding, it's regular, mainly a profile. Yeah. And here I could see more common tails, but it's not more than three in its interstitial space, and it's mainly a profile. And here it's mainly a profile with regular Lura. So, uh, and this is the rest of the views, mainly a profile. I can't see any from D lines at all. Uh, similarly here, so I I got the feeling that the from from this can um, um, the baby's um, lungs are nearly normal, and I I took off the vaporserm. I was quite confident to take off the vaporserm despite of the tachypnea, and then I saw the baby a uh, couple of days back, and the baby is absolutely fine. Um, so it it was a use, very useful tool just to get an idea about the lung. Um, Sure. Yeah, beautiful images, Dr. Sharif. Um, can you go back to R1 um, <clears throat> just to, uh, you know, um, talk about the images now? Um, uh, can you tell me what, uh, which machine uh, you're using, which scanner you're using? Yeah, this is General Electric and uh, okay. it's linear probe. Um, right. I, I believe it, it's nine, I think it's nine hertz. Right. Okay. Um, I'm not sure why it's not storing, uh, you know, uh, longer than uh, a second or so uh, of the loop. Um, uh, but in some, uh, you know, scanners, each time you go and do the uh, scan, you have to uh, rotate the knob um, um, just to increase your cycle, cycle length uh, of the loop. Uh, nonetheless, uh, good images. Um, so um, just to you know, critique on the uh, images now in the R1 section. Now, given that this baby is a well-grown term baby, 39 weeker, uh, with all the uh, background which we have noted already, um, I would expect to see a ossified um, you know, uh, ribs. So to make the image uh, you know, perfect uh, in terms of uh, you know, um, uh, making it perpendicular with the probe, uh, the point at which we'll know that you are exactly 90 degree on the pleural line is that you should be able to see the um, uh, ribs and the acoustic shadowing. So mm. if you see your R3, uh, just above the pleural line, you can see your ribs nicely. If you see on the R3. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's your pleural line. And just above that, you can see your ribs and nice acoustic shadowing. Yeah. And because you very perpendicular to it the the uh, the pleura looks a bit more uh, you know sort of uh, continuous sharp and discreet compared to your r1 and r2 where it appears a bit broken so it's not exactly broken it's just the you know the angle of interrogation with your probe 
basically. So if you are, <clears throat> the point I'm trying to make here is to have the correct interpretation uh, of this scan or to get the, uh, you know, the um, right image of the pathology or the pleura, you have to be, you know, um, bang on 90 degree on the pleura. So the, to make sure that you are, uh, you should be able to see uh, your uh, Rib, uh, you know, the ribs and the acoustic shadowing. You might not be able to see acoustic shadowing all the time, um, especially so if it is a, you know, compact B lines, uh, but you should be able to see rib in some form or the other. So in R1 and R2, um, uh, uh, the, um, uh, the reason we are not seeing that is because we are not perpendicular with the pure at that point. Uh, you know, of contact. And yes, I agree. It's all a profile. I can see some comet tails. I cannot see any B lines whatsoever in R1, R2, R3, or any of the images for that, uh, you know, Jones for that matter. And, um, moving on just before we move on, uh, you talked about the artifact in R2. Sorry, Dr. Sharif, if you can go uh, back to R2. R2. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you talk about the artifact there. So uh, this is uh, the classical uh, example of the mirror image. Now, this is a mirror image, but you can see B lines, uh, sorry, not B lines, the uh, comet tail or the lung rocket artifacts there. Um, hence, it is not a uh, um, pneumothorax. But had it been like there is no pleural sliding and no B lines or comet tail artifacts, and you can see your, um, you know, the mirror image then that would have been a, a sign of a, a pneumothorax. By mirror image, I mean, this is what you are seeing. If you can go take your cursor above the pleural line on the anechoic areas, the black areas, uh, okay. above the pleural line, above the pleural line. Above the, okay. Yeah, so so those are the area, those, those anechoic areas is being reflected directly below the pleural line. Yeah. Yeah, those those are the areas which are reflected. <clears throat> that is the area where your rib should be coming up when you are totally perpendicular yeah. to it. Yeah, and then uh, so uh, um, you should be able to see that on both sides of the pleura if this is, you know, if there is a, a predominantly A profile. So because air is not a very good medium for ultrasound waves and it reverberates continuously, so you see a mirror image artifact. So that's a mirror image artifact which you are seeing there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. Okay. Uh, shall I go to the next presentation? Uh, yeah, you can go to the next one. Right. Okay. So this is the second one. Uh, let me, uh, okay. So this is 29 plus 5 uh, weaker baby, a day four of life. Uh, his correct gestation was 30 weeks and um, one day. Um, background has um, emergency cesarean section for preeclampsia. Steroid was mature and magnesium sulfate given. Uh, intubated and two doses of surfactant uh, were given. So initially one dose was given after birth. And then because of uh, in, uh, still increased oxygen requirement, uh, and this baby was referred to us from another hospital, so they were not sure even if the first surfactant uh, was inside the lung because they got from the NZ tube. Mm -hmm. Not sure, but by day two of life, when the baby was here, we preferred to give the second dose of surfactant because the uh, uh, oxygen requirement uh, was still high. So after the second dose of surfactant, baby was extubated at day three. Five mm -hmm. and eight liters and the thirty percent of oxygen. Um, there was, I would say, moderate work of breathing and the baby was the uh, but was maintaining the saturation. The FI2 requirement was thirty eight percent, and uh, there was moderate uh, work of breathing with uh, saturation uh, above ninety four percent. So the was fine. There was no sepsis concerned. Uh, antibiotics stopped. That was the X-ray uh, before giving the second dose of surfactant when the baby was still uh, intubated. And as you mm -hmm. can see, there is a, um, a, a ground glass appearance and a bronchogram. Um, um, so I did the ultrasound that was day four. And again, uh, so this is uh, uh, R1. 
and in the other one, as you can see, the pleura is pretty irregular. I can't, uh, I can't see any variation in this. Uh, uh, doc so, sorry, Dr. Sharif, uh, I can't see your slides moving actually. Um, can you see my cursor? Like, can you see my slide? Uh, no, it's kind of a frozen. I'm not sure if it, this is my problem or everybody is seeing the same thing. I can see R1, R2, R3, but I think this is from the previous case. Oh, yeah, the slideshow is frozen. My advice would be actually you're not in slideshow mode. So if you could go to slideshow mode first. Or you might just have to close the presentation and open it again. Yeah, yeah. Can you see my screen now? Or... Okay. Not yet. Okay, just one second. Share screen. Yeah, now? Anything? We can see a screen, but not the presentation as yet. Okay, I will press maybe new share. Dr. Alok can shed some light on this. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not good. <laughs> uh, we can see your uh, slides now, yeah. Okay. Can so if you just go to in? slideshow mode, so just because at the moment you're showing us each individual slide without slideshow. So okay. just uh, if you go to full screen, uh, so the... Full screen. I'm already on full screen. Um, you mean uh, from here, like yes. uh, close this side? Oh, yes, I know what you mean. Like this one? Yes, beautiful. If you just click. Ah, it's good. Great. Fantastic. Okay. Right. So, um, coming to R1. Yeah. Uh, I can see that the pleura is sliding. However, it's not entirely regular. So, I would say there is um, irregularity. And I can't see A, A, A lines or, or B lines. It's white out long. In this field, so no aeration. Moving to R2. Uh, sorry, that was L1. Uh, oh, yes. So that was uh, R1. And this mm -hmm. is the, uh, I, I got the M mode. I, I tried to put the cursor here and um, having that. So I. I wasn't entirely sure how to describe the M mode in a, an RDS baby. And I, I realized after that, after saving the images, that maybe I could put the cursor on, on here. But um, uh, I wasn't entirely sure because I know that the seesaw is one of the signs that the like, so normal. My, my only comment would be, Dr. Dabur, just with the previous images as well, what has happened is that in order to accommodate all the images in one screen, We've kind of altered the width and the length of the image, which um, I mean, I think for us would not be a problem, but it just means that the interpretation of the images would be tricky. Mm -hmm. my, my advice would be that when you save the JPEG as is in that format, use a, a individual slide for each image if necessary. <laughs> and I'd advise everybody, don't worry about the time it takes, but put an individual image of the same without altering it. Uh, okay. I think when I look at that second image where you've got the M mode on, at this particular point, it looks like a seashore sign to me. Mm. Uh, the the yeah. challenge is because we've widened it. Uh, it's quite wide. It, oh, it just okay. gives us a stretched kind of a look. But mm. in terms of your cursor, what I'd say is you, you want to keep the cursor at a point on the plural line. Mm. And like if the if if the entire image is completely uniform, like if you look at your first image where you've got a uniform whiteout, now there's no transition points in that image. So yeah. you know if you put your and you did the M mode at three points in that image and it looked absolutely the same as Seashore sign, you'd save them. But if you had a point of transition where you were suddenly moving from this white profile to a, an A profile and there was absent plural sliding then to see the LUN point, I would try to keep my cursor at that particular point. Yeah, I see. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And I think uh, the reason you are getting the kind of image you got for the M mode here is because your cursor is over the area where there is an acoustic 
like shadowing of some kind. You can see there's a fallout there. It's all black. So the machine for the scanner, it's like there is nothing, basically. Okay. Right. Um, so it gives you that kind of an image there. Yeah, yeah. Right. So on this image, for example, the, the cursor should be somewhere here, like that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Thank you. Um, so this is the um, R2. Uh, again, I, I can see that the, there is some A lines here that comes uh, in the middle, which is relatively better than R1. Uh, the pleura is sliding and it's regular again with uh, micro um, uh, 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 consolidations underneath. Uh, and I can see some B lines as well. So it's, it, it's, it's AB profile, but it's mainly B. Uh, I can see. Um, um, what was this? That was R5. So I went to R5 because there was difficulty getting R3 in this mm -hmm. video. So R5, I could say if I compare it to R1 and R2, R5 is too much better in terms of variation. Um, the, there is a good color sliding, and it really makes a difference getting the arm abducted in terms of the quality of the images. Over here, the game is slightly attenuated there. I couldn't see anything from here. But from what I can see, I can see that uh, there is AB profile, but it's mainly, um, uh, like I would say, it's mixed, but I can see more irrigation here. In R6, uh, uh, I believe it's uh, there is fluid sliding and it's um, irregular. It's mainly, sorry, it's mainly B profile. I can see. Uh, three or more, uh, or two, uh, two or three B lines uh, in each interstitial space. Going to the left side, um, this is L1. You can see here uh, irregular pleural sliding, um, and uh, it's, uh, uh, I can see some conflict B lines, if I'm not wrong, uh, but I can't see any uh, A lines there. And then here I can see double long point Please correct me if I'm wrong. I can see two different uh, areas in the L2. Uh, um, here on the uh, upper side of the lungs, um, I can, or the left side of the screen, there is a uh, uh, mixed AB profile. Uh, however, on the right side of the screen here, I can see a white area, white out area. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is L3, again, it's a uh, uh, white out long, I can't appreciate any um, uh, A or B lines, it's white out area. And here, uh, this L3, uh, I, I, I think, uh, uh, Abizid, that's what you meant, that I need to be... Yeah, and that's a seashore sign. Yeah, I got the seashore sign. Um, and um, yeah, it, it's white out and it's seashore sign. And uh, here yeah. in L4, um, there is also a white out lung. Creation is not great. And the L5 here, um, again, there is a uh, white out lung. I can't see any uh, A or B lines. Yeah, yeah. Um, beautiful yeah. images, uh, Dr. Sheriff. And uh, if you start again from the R1, again, uh, the same thing, um, uh, we'll try as much as possible to be perpendicular with the plural line, um, the same comment as from the previous one uh, over the R1 area. But I agree, you know, there is no sort of a discrete plural line that you can uh, see. It's all a smudge out effect there. And uh, that basically uh, uh, means a sign of RDS on the, you can see sub, uh, you know, subpulmonic consolidations um, uh, in the R1. Uh, so in uh, just uh, the image below that, I think that's R2. Yeah. So uh, again, you can, you can, you can see uh, subpulmonic consolidations in that um, uh, image as well. Um, again, um, what I feel is uh, also there a bit of a thymus coming in there uh, in the R2 on the left hand side of the screen on the uh, of that image. That being right, um, yeah, yeah, that's that's the area. I, I believe that's the thymus coming in the picture. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, you can you can see 
smudged out uh, um, pleural line um, and supplemonic consolidations there. However, your R5 looks very, you know, well aerated. Um, I can see occasional B lines, but it's mostly A profile there. Um, and the reason you can see very clearly for yourself in R5, you can see your ribs very clearly. You can see acoustic shadowing in between. Yeah. Whereas on the previous two images, you cannot see your ribs. So um, you have to take that with a little bit of a you know pinch of salt there, like uh, of that image captured. Um, nonetheless, uh, it is a it is a white out there. Uh, um, uh, I'm not denying that fact, but just to make the image more you know <clears throat> um, uh, precise, uh, this is what we need. The one which you have got in R5 and R6 area. Um, the reason for this sort of a differential, you know, aeration, as you have uh, said already, that baby has received surfactant by this point of time, and not sure that how much has gone into the lung. Yeah. Uh, I think some of it has reached <laughs> some portions of the lung, which is uh, well aerated uh, compared to the others. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. What do you think, Alok? I would agree. I think uh, there's an element of uh, differential aeration and uh, clearly I think the challenge with R5 and R6 images is we can only see up to two centimeters. Mm. That's where I would say that uh, what is happening is that uh, you, you, your alignment actually doesn't look too bad, but are you, uh, are you very close to the scapula? Uh, when you're doing R5, R6. I, I was much closer to the midline. You're much closer to the midline. So we're losing out the deeper portion and it might just be that you have to use a slightly lower frequency uh, and compromise. Or the other thing is as the baby's breathing and yeah. if he's not paralyzed, was the baby arching his back and were you losing contact? Uh, well, the baby was moving, yes. Yeah, yeah. So what happens with that is obviously... Uh, sound wave penetration is poorer. You know, if you compare this to R1, R2, where you've got good depth, yeah, yeah, yeah. actually you're losing out with two and three. And that's quite crucial if in particular you want to pick up areas of deep consolidation. So again, contact is very important. If you find the baby struggling, what I like to do is often it's because I am, I'm not getting a good image and I'm pushing a little bit harder, which is making the baby uncomfortable. So what I do is I just rest the probe on the baby to try and get it nice and uh, uh, get good contact. The other thing that I would, I would strongly advise is the back of a baby. And this is just, uh, it's, it's, it's clinical experience. They have a huge number of proprioceptors, especially term babies and bigger babies. They, if, if you put cold gel and a cold probe onto the back, Babies absolutely hate it as compared to the front of the chest, which is quite surprising. So I would always advise where possible, if you can, and we have gel sachets, sterile gel sachets. We just keep them to try and keep them a little bit warm. And like, if you have, yeah, yeah. I, I got them usually from a warm, uh, uh, like we we warm them. I know it's very useful. I look, I agree. Uh, my apologies, I'm feeding you eggs, uh, but yeah, just I think a little bit of uh, a better contact. If you feel you have good contact and you're still struggling, you might have to lose use a lower frequency. And don't hesitate. You know, you've got your upper image here. You've got the information that you have from your upper image. Uh, so it's really the deeper content that we kind of focus on. So, you know, but otherwise I would agree with Abhijit. Good images, probably differential aeration mm -hmm. uh, of the lungs, secondary to surfactant and, you know, be very interesting to see a subsequent image. Just, yeah. To, yeah. Sorry, yeah, Abhijit, carry on. Yeah. Sorry, Alok. Yeah, my, my question to Dr. Sharif, was the baby on prone, uh, Priya, you know, most of the time when you did a scan? Yes. Yeah. yeah, that would also indicate better aeration of, because you have R5 and R6 yeah. superior. So again, if you look at gravity, maybe that explains why R1 and R2 are a little bit more dense as compared. So yeah. again, take into account the, the position of the baby. It's very, very important. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. What we're going to do is just, uh, uh, I believe there are some people in the waiting room, I've been told. It's quite late to join. But I can't see anybody else. Okay. So what I would say is uh, the next person to present, uh, if you could stop sharing your screen, yeah. will be Doris. So Doris, are you, are you available?
Yes, I am. Uh, Abhi, how long is your presentation today? Um, I just have two or three cases. No, no, no problems. I'm just, uh, I was just asking Abhijit how long his presentation will be. Um, Alok, uh, I mean, 45 minutes to one hour, depending on how many uh, practice slides we want. So my gut feeling at the moment is, Doris, we might stop with you today. And I will have to humbly apologize to the fourth person who was due to present and put you on for first next time, if that's okay. I, I hope they don't mind. Yeah, that's that's perfectly fine. Mayank, I'm so sorry. I keep postponing you, but I promise you, <laughs> that, that's it's, okay. a, it's the golden handshake. You will be the first person to present in the next session. Or if we can finish it earlier than 45 minutes, maybe Mayank can present sure. at the end of it. So we've got, we've got 11 minutes. Let's go for it. Uh, uh, Doris, go for it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, let me just make this coming. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the first case I will start with. Um, if you could just go into full slideshow yeah. mode. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Okay. Um, so the first case is I'll start with is actually a follow-up of the case I presented the last time. So this was a um, expert 23 week, uh, 540 grams at birth, um, had a dose of Kirocef after birth, had hypertension and the ventilator settings for the first 24 hours. Um, so it was not in a lot of oxygen, about 25 to 30% oxygen, um, but developed pulmonary hemorrhage um, after 24 hours and was um, on high frequency in 100% oxygen and then also had bilateral grade four IVH. Um, so at that point on day two of life, the um, long ultrasound scans I got, I just got the anterior, oops, sorry. I just got the anterior views only. And on the, the left side, um, these are the previous images. The images I will discuss are follow-up images. Yeah, so on the left side, I could clearly see that the pleural, this was after 24 hours with some pulmonary hemorrhages. Um, the pleural was quite irregular, um, as you could see with um, um, so pleural consolidations, there was um, mainly B um, lines, which was more, um, so essentially a B profile, but there was pleural sliding. And on the right side also, you could also appreciate um, the same. The pleural was looking very irregular, um, as you can see, um, there was pleural sl sliding uh, with all these areas of subpleural consolidation. Um, I think there were very few A lines, as you can see, but mainly B lines, so basically a B profile. So I did a follow-up long ultrasound scan on day 12 of life. So after day two, sorry, I'm just going to plug my device before it goes off. <laughs> So after, um, after day two, the, um, this baby was transferred to a surgical unit for a surgical review um, after developing an iatrogenic oesophageal perforation. So came back um, on day seven of life and I repeated the long ultrasound scan on day 12 of life. So he was still ventilated. Um, the pulmonary hemorrhage had resolved. He was on conventional ventilation and in about 40 to 50% oxygen and was on, on antibiotics for staph sepsis um, this was his x-ray um, at that point and so these images starting on the left side and, and I compared it with the previous images on day two of life you can still appreciate that the plural still looked um, irregular and with these areas of subpleural consolidation um, these tiny areas, I wasn't entirely sure whether they were static air bron bron bronchograms. Um, there is plural sliding, but mainly B lines, which you can see all clearly, see clearly, um, which highlights a B profile. And um, out of curiosity, I put, the, I put it on the M mode to see what it would show. Um, I was trying to differentiate between this, the C show appearance, but I don't think this is, I don't, I, I couldn't really say whether this was a seashore appearance um, at this point. So, and then it continued on. So now I use a hockey stick and because it was such a small baby, I didn't do an L1 and an L2 
two views. So I did an anterior and the lateral view. So on the lateral view, the L3 on the left side, so you can appreciate the plural. So this is in, I, I try to capture the MO2. So you can appreciate um, on this side, the plural is not continuous, it's all broken down. And I was suspecting that this is thread sign and with lots of plural, so plural consolidation, um, but you can still appreciate that there is plural sliding, mainly B um, lines. I did not see any A lines at all. Um, so which highlights that this is also a B profile. So now I'm going to the right side, um, on the right anterior side, um, same, you can appreciate the plural, still looks irregular. Um, with small, with areas of so plural consolidation. Um, there is plural side sliding. I can see some comet tails, um, but I can still appreciate mainly B, um, B lines and they seem um, coalesced. I think these are A lines, but you have mainly B lines. So which yeah. yes, highlights that this is a B profile. Okay, and um, R3 also. Um, you can appreciate the plural also, quite um, call, um, irregular and coarse with subplural consolidations and these areas of consolidation. There is plural sliding and also mainly um, B, pro B lines only seen the B profile. I couldn't even see any A lines um, um, in this um, scan. I'm sorry. So this is the first case. I don't know if you want to say anything. We want to talk about it before I move to the second case. Um, yeah, lovely images, Doris. And the, um, uh, you mentioned this baby had pulmonary hemorrhage. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, um, uh, we're going to talk something about pulmonary hemorrhage today, but uh, um, it's, it was very clearly visualized here. You have broken pleura, you know, subpleural consolidations. Um, uh, you can see some bigger areas of consolidation there with the uh, shred sign as well. Um, and as you know, blood is also fluid. You can see all the you know B lines coming predominantly B profile in all the uh, lung zones. Slightly well aerated on R1 and L1 areas. We can see some A lines with an eye of eight there. Um, but um, yeah, all other zones I can see mostly B lines. Uh, with the irregular broken uh, uh, plural uh, line. Um, and on the M mode interrogation, yes, those are the, um, you know, the seashore or the sandy beach uh, sign. Okay. Um, and you can see nice T lines also coming up there. Uh, maybe it's quite tachycardic just looking at that. Um, um, yeah. Uh, lovely images. I'm not sure about your gain setting. I mean, uh, we do have some fallout of uh, images on the lower half of the uh, screen. It it does comes up occasionally, but uh, most of the time we are losing out on the um, uh, images on the lower half of the screen from three centimeter and beyond. Okay. Uh, might be because of the gain setting as well. Okay. So should I use a higher gain? Yeah, I mean, if you have if you have an eye scan button that you can use that one, or you have to manually, uh, you know, um, uh, increase the gain for the lower part of the screen. Okay. Um, but beautiful images. Thank you. And then, sorry, just going to the R three image. So, mm -hmm. are these static air bronchograms or are they consolidation? So yeah, th those look like a static uh, air bronchogram. Um, yeah, I mean uh, the best way to uh, you know uh, to differentiate between a static and a, a dynamic bronchogram is to zoom in in that area where you can see more clearly what the uh, the character of the bronchogram is. Um, but just by glancing at it, it looks more like a static bronchogram. Um, yeah. Okay. And then, um, sorry, so Abhijit, uh, I'm uh, so sorry, Abhijit, do you want to tell the group what T lines are? Just because not everybody will know. And they're the T lines, yeah. Uh, um, yes. 
Yeah, so uh, we're going to cover that in the presentation today anyway, but the T lines are, uh, because I cannot show it in my cursor here, it will be a little difficult, but T lines basically that the, uh, the, the word T comes from transmitted. So it's a transmitted cardiac pulse on the lung. That's what T line is. So, so uh, basically you can see waves with the seashore sign. So you see the slight pattern change and Abhijit will be able to show it to you which kind of looks like a small interruption in the sandy beach. You know, it's as if the pattern you get is like when somebody runs through the sandy beach and leaves their footprints yeah. in between. So carry on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So I'll go to the next case. All right. Spent a weekend doing long ultrasound scans. Thankfully, all the babies were stable enough for me to do them. Um, so this case out was also quite interesting. So this was a 25-week uh, um, born by spontaneous vaginal delivery after preterm labor. Mom had antenatal steroids and magnesium sulfate. Baby was born in poor condition, required, um, was intubated quite quickly, required 240 milligrams of Curacef. Uh, he was extubated on day 12, but was reintubated on day 12. Sorry, on day 10, and was reintubated on day 12. And um, when he was reintubated, re was put on conventional ventilation, about 35 to 40 percent oxygen. But his FiO2 was rising, and his um, pressures on the ventilator were rising. He was on volume guarantee of six mils per kilo. Uh, he was on antibiotics or suspected sepsis when he was reintubated, and I did this long ultrasound on day 13 of life. Mm -hmm. So this is the L1 um, the image. So I, I don't, I don't think I, I don't know that I can describe the, that there is no plural. <laughs> because it's just so broken down. So this is the shred sign, isn't it? Oh, I think. Yes. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm not sure I can say that there's a plural, but you can appreciate plural sliding and um, yeah. lines. Um, Sorry, like Doris, I'll just come up, I'll come in here. Um, just to make sure to the group that shred sign by definition is not broken plural line. So broken plural line is what we have seen with Sharif's and uh, Jaridin's um, uh, scans at the beginning, where you have discontinuity on the plural line. That's that's broken plural line. When we talk about the shirt sign, it's the border, irregular border of the consolidated area. So you can see, you cannot see any plural line here, but it's a shirt sign because uh, uh, these areas are consolidated. You can see some hyperequate, which is bright white in color, uh, you know, small, roundish or sometimes a horizontal line, bright hyperequic areas. Interspaced by, you can see some anequic areas, like, you know, uh, slightly, um, uh, I mean, uh, on the darker side, on the gray scale or towards the black, if you can see. I, I cannot show with, with my um, cursor here, but you can, you can appreciate there are small areas where there is a, um, yes, yes, indeed. Uh, that is that is the space where you can see an echoic areas. So that's an area of consolidation. And uh, the consolidations always have an irregular margin. And that irregular margin is called uh, fractal sign or shred sign, which is uh, typical of uh, consolidate uh, consolidations. Yeah, Doris, carry on. Okay. And uh, I put the M mode on. Mm -hmm. This is the Sandy Beach. For seashore? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, so I tried to get an L2 view. I think this is the heart, and I kept trying to um, move the probe to get the heart out of view, but I wasn't really successful. But I could still appreciate the plural and some consolidation. Plural, yes, and consolidation and some plural sliding. So L3. Um, you can still appreciate, I can appreciate the plural, um, but still with some so plural consolidation, there's plural sliding and a few A lines, but mainly B lines from what I can see. And sorry, I'll just move. So to L, R1. So mm -hmm. R1, um, the, I, I, 
don't know if I can say the plural is continuous here or all this is um, all this. This is spread time. But as it moves, you almost think it's continuous, but I don't think it is. The, um, so I think I would say this is shred sign also. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and you can see that small anechoic area in uh, in the middle coming up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one. And it seems to change as the uh, um, as the baby is breathing. Yeah. 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 But there's but you can still appreciate plural sliding and mainly B B lines. I can see some faint A lines, but this is mainly yeah. B profile. From yeah. What I can see. Can I also say just on the right hand side, I wonder what you think, Abhiji. Just extreme right R1. So if you just go, yeah, just there, that area. Yeah, yeah. The dynamic air bronchograms just up and down, just at the bottom there. What do you think? Yeah, possible. Uh, look, uh, the best way to describe this one would be a color Doppler interrogation yeah. in that area to see yeah. if there is an increased, uh, you know, blood That's flow. Clarity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, the R2 B also is the same um, straight sign B profile all the way through. I uh, we can't see any A lines, and there seems to be this area that seems to come at the yes this. So I don't know whether that's a consolidation. See that, uh, um, but mainly this is mainly a B. This is mainly B profile. And then R3, the plural seems uh, more regular compared to all the other views, but you can still appreciate so plural consolidation. You have plural sliding clearly and also a preponderance of uh, B lines, compact B lines, so the B profile. Yeah, Doris, uh, again, I would like to come here. In the, uh, uh, I think that was R3, yes. So uh, R2, sorry. Uh, in R2, uh, yes, we can see consolidations, shred sign, and yes, we can see B lines. Now, because you can see a shred sign, you know, the consolidated area, um, irregular margin and everything, I would like to call that as a C profile, C for consolidation. Okay. So there is A profile, there is B profile. Now um, uh, uh, the C takes the precedence here because uh, that is not something you see uh, um, because there has been some sort of a process going on there. So it's heavily consolidated area that, uh, you know, um, that uh, lung zone. So I will call that as a C profile there. Okay. Whereas in R3, you can see a predominantly B lines, you know, um, um, and I think with an eye of it, I can see some A lines, but that that is the one where you can say it's a B profile. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've already shown this. And um, yeah, this were his x rays. So his x ray on the one of life. And his, um, it was after Kurosev was given ET tube at T2, NG tube in place. Well, his long fields. Um, you can see uh, looked patchy, and then the 12th of life after he was reintubated again, the long fields certainly look more hazy. And yeah. Look, yeah, just out of interest on a day one x ray, the UVC is going more veering towards the right. Yeah, it was, yeah. so it was removed. The UVC was removed. This is the UA, but the, yeah, the UVC was, was removed, and um, a long line was put <coughs> in after this. Yeah. Yep. Um, I would show one more, and then that is it for the because of time. So I wouldn't. I have that. Okay, I will discuss this one. So this one is another um, baby, twenty-five week. Uh, um, mom came in with PD bleeds and bulgy membranes, so there was no time to give antenatal steroids or magnesium sulfate. Baby was born in poor condition, no heart rate, no respiratory effort, um, was given CPR for 33 minutes and intubated at 14 minutes of life. Um, on transfer to the new natal unit was noted to have a, um, a pneumothorax, so a chest string was inserted and he was transferred to us. And when he came to us, um, the chest string wasn't bubbling anymore, so it was clamped and removed after 24 hours and his um, oxygen requirement improved. And um, he was excavated actually after 24 hours. And um, this long ultrasound done 
scan was done on day eight of life. At this point, he was on high flow, eight liters in about 25% oxygen when this long ultrasound was done. So um, starting with the R1 image, you can appreciate the pleura. Um, it looks continuous. I think, um, I don't know that I'll describe this as some, some pleural consolidation, um, but there's pleural sliding that we you can see clearly and lots of, there are B lines and I think some A lines. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I think there are some comet tails, but you still see plural and B lines, I mean, going all the way right down. Um, so maybe I'll describe this as a AB profile. Yeah, I'm not sure anyway. And then this was it, the M mode done. I think switch shows the sandy beach appearance, I think. And then R2, you managed to get R2, you still appreciate the plural, um, which is uh, continuous and regular. You can appreciate some the plural, um, yeah, I think it's ultra plural sliding. And I think there are some comet tails. There's a comet tail and um, some B lines, but there are not a lot of B lines. Um, I was a bit concerned that the plural on this side was not moving, but when I look closer, I think there is plural sliding all the way. I think this is the lever coming into view. Um, R3, the plural looks, um, continuous as we can see and regular there is plural sliding um i can appreciate a lines and b lines also and so i think i would say this is an a b profile mm -hmm. okay i got that right yeah and then r3 um plural is continuous um with plural sliding comet tails um, sin, but there's also B lines, and I think there are some A lines with an eye of it, but it looks like mainly B lines. Same. And L1, so with L1, um, you can appreciate the plural. Um, I don't know whether these are comet tails or the plural, or this is a plural consolidation because it looks thicker. Um, wasn't too, I wasn't really sure. Um, but you can appreciate the plural is sliding. And I see just mainly B lines. I can't see any A lines. And I know this is the heart coming into view. And then I don't know why, in fact, I saved this because I didn't know why the M mode looked like this. Um, so I just saved it. Um, I think that that's uh, M mode is interrogating your heart. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. And um, just to answer your question, uh, Doris, for L1 uh, image, uh, are these, uh, can you see comet tail artifacts there or lung rockets there? So um, if you see B lines, there is no question of um, lung rockets or um, um, uh, comet tail artifacts because comet tail artifacts do not erase A line. So you will see A line and then you will see some short, you know, projections coming from the pleura but it doesn't erase the A line. So A line stays there, you know, um, your art, uh, cometal artifacts will come. Okay. When there's a white out, basically the B lines are coming, your A lines disappears, it's all B lines. Okay. So then we don't have to talk about the, uh, do we see cometal artifacts or not? It's, it's really difficult, you can't comment on that. So it will be all B lines. Okay. When you see like two or three B lines, in between there could be cometal artifacts, but then there will be A lines as well. Like we see in a normal normal um, uh, lung scan of a newborn baby, you can see because up to three lines is normal. You can have three uh, B lines. Uh, it could be interspaced by the cometal artifacts, but then you will have A lines as well because it's a normal lung. Yeah. So when you have complete whiteout, your A lines disappears. You only have B lines. Now you don't you don't see um, cometal artifacts or the lung rockets, if that makes sense. <laughs> yes, it does, <laughs> it does, yeah. Um, so the L2 view, I, I wasn't so sure what I was, what I was um, seeing. Maybe I think this must be the heart 
um, I saved it anyway. And then L3. So mm -hmm. with L3, uh, you can see the plural um, clearly, but and there is look plural sliding, but mainly B B lines um, all the way. I can't see any A line. So this is also clearly a B profile. And, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, this was the x-ray. So this was the x-ray on admission, which you can see clearly with the chest drain in situ, ET tube, um, NG tube, and the UAC and UVC in situ. And um, I think this was the most recent, uh, this was before when the baby was reintubated again. So after the, after the long ultrasound scan, the baby, it wasn't my fault, then we developed apneas, radis and the saturations, not when I was doing the scan or after, a few hours after, mm -hmm. and had to be reintubated again. So this was the chest x-ray after it was reintubated. And the lines were taken out at this point. I think there were concerns of sepsis, so the umbilical lines were taken out and then you started on antibiotics and a long line was put in after that. Um, yeah, that's it. And what is, Doris, what's the big CRP of this baby? Um, so yeah, the CRP um, after after the second X-ray when baby was reintubated again, um, rose 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 to I think about sixty, seventy, or eighty, and the baby had bl um, blood culture positive sepsis, so clear sepsis yeah. after this. Yeah, so it was clearly septic. Baby, baby was clearly septic. Yeah, yeah, lovely. Yeah, lovely images, Doris. Um, uh, only thing I think uh, um, uh, while doing the scan, we would be more mindful of the uh, gain setting as we are losing out on the you know lower half of the image. Um, that is something we would like to uh, um, uh, address. But otherwise, lovely images. Okay. I mean, we are getting the information what we need. Yeah, yeah. And uh, in this particular case, um, uh, you know, is it pulmonary hemorrhage giving that appearance or is it uh, sepsis giving that appearance? It's quite difficult to comment. Um, we can talk about consolidations and differentiate it uh, with a color Doppler, which we're going to speak in today's uh, session. Um, but overall, pulmonary hemorrhage. hemorrhage. There was no pulmonary hemorrhage. The baby didn't have pulmonary hemorrhage. Oh, not this one. Okay, yeah. Uh, but on the previous, uh, you know, uh, case, um, uh, it's it's difficult to say the image, uh, you know, the the kind of uh, signs we are seeing on the scan is because of what until we, you know, color uh, interrogate the areas of consolidations. Uh, but we'll talk about that in the session today. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. So, Abhijit, are you happy to share your screen? Uh, yes, I'll, I'm just doing that. Yeah. Just, just while Abhijit is sharing his screen, just a few questions that I'm going to answer. So, first of all, uh, one of the questions that Mayank asked, which is an absolutely beautiful question, is do when you're oscillated uh, and brutal sliding, and this is a very important thing. So when you have air trapping and you have a lot of, uh, say, uh, kind of uh, air in the lungs, rule sliding can be diminished. So if you get a pure A profile and you kind of paralyzed and you have a lot of air trapping, you, you, rule sliding can be diminished. In a pneumothorax, rule sliding will be absent not diminished. So, you know, it's really important that if you want to focus on the plural sliding, you can zoom in on that, on the plura, put your focus into the plura, but air trapping, yeah, commonly plural sliding can be reduced. A uh, few other questions. In the case of C profile, do we think more of infection? No. C profile indicates consolidation. It could indicate deep consolidation. It could indicate uh, sub, uh, you know, uh, plural consolidations of a, a, a decent kind of nature. But really what we're talking about here is the fact that you've got an area of lung that is uh, consolidated uh, as opposed to just pure infection. Now, if with the C profile, you have shred sign, you have dynamic air bronchograms and you put color Doppler and you see that it looks really vascular compared to surrounding areas. 
then yes, you should suspect a mnemonic kind of a process or an infective process going on. If the CRP is high, you should suspect it. Uh, again, uh, Dr. Atnafu's asked, what would increased vascularity indicate? Well, it indicates that you have increased blood flow to that region of the lung. And if it's broken down and you have shred sign, or you have dynamic air bronchograms or dynamic fluid bronchograms, you know, exudate going in and out of the lung, which actually looks dark as opposed to looking bright, then that usually indicates, uh, you know, possibly an infective process. Other things, obviously, that sometimes you might see, you might not see air bronchograms and fluid bronchograms, but you might see an area of lung that has increased vascularity, which indicates that there might be something congenital going on there. So without further ado, I'm going to let Abhijit start. I've, in, I've, I've increased the time of the session, Abhijit, so don't worry, you can carry on. Lovely. Thank you, Alok. Um, yeah, so uh, just crack, let's crack on with the uh, session now. Uh, we'll talk about the abnormal lung again, and um, there will be a lot of repetitions of what we have done before. Uh, in my previous session, we talked about pneumothorax uh, pneumonia. We're going to talk a bit, little more about it today. And um, I'll do less of the theory, theories today and more of, uh, you know, image uh, uh, practice slides, basically. We'll, we'll, we'll see different uh, images and we'll, uh, we'll try to make it a more uh, involving session today. Um, yeah, so the abnormal lung and what are the objectives today? So we'll recap a bit, uh, um, not in a conventional way, but there will be a lot of repetition of the same signs um, so that you know, we see these things again and again, and we can consolidate it, uh, that in our memory. Uh, we'll talk about pneumothorax, pneumonia, a uh, little bit about pulmonary hemorrhage, and then we'll have some practice slides and uh, uh, we'll do some Q and A's at the end. Erlix. Um, so why, I mean, we have been diagnosing pneumonia, uh, pneumothoraxis for last couple of decades with the use of chest x-ray. Um, and now uh, what's new we're gonna do with the uh, lung ultrasound or why we are using it. Um, is because it's superior to chest x-ray in diagnosing pneumothorax. There has been a uh, uh, lot of publications about it uh, from the uh, adult emergency care medicine um, and also from the neonatal uh, uh, studies. Uh, that lung ultrasound is superior to chest x-ray. Um, how superior? So chest x-ray is 75% sensitive in diagnosing it and 100% specific. So when you say it, it is there. But if you don't say it, 75% of the time, uh, you're right. 25% of the time, you're wrong. Um, whereas uh, lung ultrasound is 98% sensitive and again, 100% specific. So um, uh, we can see a very, very minute pockets of air as well with the lung ultrasound. What we're going to do about it? Probably nothing. But we, we do see, we do not miss uh, um, uh, pneumothorax with the lung ultrasound. If our, prop, if our technique is proper, if we are looking at all the areas of the lung. So uh, yes, 98% sensitive and 100% specific. Now the question arises, can we quantify air leaks? Well, the answer to that is yes and no. Um, yes, we can quantify uh, grossly, and uh, um, uh, that's a yes uh, as an answer, um, and no, because uh, sometimes it becomes very tricky, uh, uh, and you cannot give an absolute number or, uh, uh, you know, uh, do we need to put a chest strain or not in um, looking at the uh, pneumothorax on the um, lung ultrasound. So you have to take into account the clinical condition of the baby as well. So can we quantify Alex? No, in that case, um, because it will, <clears throat> it will be really difficult to um, uh, quantify the volume of uh, air with the lung ultrasound. Um, talking about the evidence, so you can see uh, um, um, there are a lot of papers uh, have come up. Um, it says the overall sensitivity for the um, uh, lung ultrasound is 78.6 to 100% and specificity uh, is 96.5 to 100%. This is at the beginning of when we started doing it. And as these studies you know, kept on adding on, uh, uh, like you know, the uh, sensitivity we can, we, can, we can safely say is around 98% now. And uh, there have been um, um, you know, uh, meta-analysis in Cochrane um, and all the uh, you know, New England Journal of Medicine uh, Association of Anesthetists. I haven't put all the papers name here, but trust me, there are a lot of papers which uh, talk about the same thing. So it's unequivocally uh, more sensitive. Now, 
because lung ultrasound was at infancy a couple of years back and still a baby at this point of time um and as with all the uh, new modalities of you know um uh, diagnostic medicine, there is always a little bit of a pushback or a resistance uh, uh, from our colleagues. So we needed uh, something uh, from a global body to accredite it as a you know proper way of uh, or proper modality to be used as a diagnostic tool in uh, in babies. It has long been established in the uh, adult medicine, but. Uh, uh, that's a completely different ball game in babies. So um, we needed some global body to accredit it. So ASPINIC, the European Society of Pediatric and Neonatal Intensive Care, you know, all the grown-ups uh, have uh, had a roundtable conference and gone through all the evidences that has been there at that point of time and have come up with the uh, uh, recommendations of point of care ultrasound, which is inclusive of lung ultrasound. And, and it talks that um, uh, it's, it's uh, accurately detect pneumothorax in units and children. So there you go. We have uh, a strong agreement, uh, a consensus from the aspinic that it, it works and, and the uh, level of evidence is B. Now, mind you, this was a couple of years back and we have a lot more studies which has been added. And I'm sure in, in the next session, whenever uh, that would be uh, from the aspinic, the, uh, the level of evidence will move to A. Um, the level of quality of evidence, uh, what I mean by that is this, uh, as it's been uh, uh, you know, reflected on your screen, the A being um, uh, high quality of evidence where further research is very unlikely uh, to change our confidence. Uh, you don't need many, uh, many papers or research to uh, prove that it's already proven beyond a point. Whereas uh, level B is a few more, uh, um, uh, you know, further researches are required to sort of, uh, um, uh, impact our confidence uh, uh, on its accuracy um, in detecting pneumothorax. So, uh, and again, as I said, you know, a lot more studies have been added after that. So uh, I'm pretty sure that it will move from B to A in uh, next session. Right. So <clears throat> what are the advantages of the lung ultrasound uh, uh, when we uh, uh, talk about detecting air leaks as compared to the chest X-ray? It is immediate. Um, um, chest x-ray you have to uh, you know sort of uh, request it wait for the um, uh, radiology uh, technician to come uh, handle the baby uh, to you know to do 10 different maneuvers and finally get an x-ray which again you have to wait to get it to your pack system and uh, and then see for everybody uh, on the screen uh, and to say that oh there is a pneumothorax whereas with the lung ultrasound it's the primary clinician who's looking after the baby have a doubt that oh there might be a pneumothorax with this baby is you know suddenly the respiratory effort has gone up uh, um, oxygen requirement has gone up or whatever the baby is deteriorating so why not we uh, you know put a probe on the chest and uh, have a look so it's very immediate and it's done by the primary care physician of the baby so then it's very repeatable you you can do umpteen number of time uh, uh, without worrying about the um, you know putting the baby is the uh, risk of ionizing radiation multiple times so. Uh, as many times you can do it and it is advisable to do uh, many times because that will be a serial ultrasound to see if it is progressing or you know uh, improving or uh, worsening it is cost effective and cherry on top it reduces radiation exposure on the babies and as nadia has spoke yesterday um their unit in uh, paris uh, uh, they um, practically don't use chest x-ray anymore they they do use only lung ultrasound um, um in their neonatal units so um so these are the advantages but we have to be mindful of the fact that there are some false positive cases as well especially Excuse me, Abhi. um sorry about that that's my computer i'll just put that on mute yeah so um yeah about the false positives so we have to be very mindful of the false positive scenarios because when we are learning to do this and you know especially so in the because as i say this was at infancy and now it's a baby and we still have some resistance or pushback from the colleagues so we don't want to be on the you know um uh, wrong side of the team where we have said there is a pneumothorax we do a chest x-ray and there is none so um so what are the false positive so if you have done a mainstream uh, intubation, basically single lung intubation, your tube has gone uh, way far in. Uh, on the contralateral side, there will not be any uh, movement. So you lose pleural siding on the other side, uh, which is one of the signs. It's not specific enough, but uh, that's one of the signs uh, we talk about in um, uh, diagnosing pneumothorax. So that's one. Blebs and bullets. 
again, these are a small pockets of air uh, from the outpouching of the pleura because of, uh, you know, again, uh, it could be spontaneous. It could be because of high pressures on the, um, on the ventilator. Uh, but nonetheless, um, because lung ultrasound can pick up the smallest pocket of air, it's going to pick up the blebs and bullas, and it will give you a false impression that there is a pneumothorax there. Then there, if there is an emphysema in the baby, again, emphysema is outside the um, uh, pleura. It's in the subcutaneous tissue, but it's um, uh, because it's air and it's an enemy of ultrasound uh, waves. So it's not going to let any waves uh, pass through it. So it's going to give you a uh, false positive uh, sign of uh, pneumothorax being present there. And also because you don't have a pleural sliding, as we have seen the questions in the chat box, there is no pleural sliding in the um, uh, pneumothorax and in consolidated areas. Uh, so if you don't see, uh, if you see actually, if there is a collapse of consolidations in that particular area of the lung, you're not going to see uh, pleural sliding and might indicate towards uh, um, a pneumothorax. So these are the uh, um, uh, scenarios where you can have false positive, but we can we can work around it and uh, so that we don't um, diagnose falsely a uh, pneumothorax. And then where can we have false negatives? There is a pneumothorax, but we don't see it. Can it actually happen? Yes. If you have an in inappropriate technique of doing it, then that's the only uh, uh, um, uh, point you have to be mindful. Uh, um, so it's always an inappro inappropriate technique if you uh, fail to see a pneumothorax with a lung ultrasound. Now, um, <clears throat> I'd like to talk about this air fluid ratio curve. Um, as you can see on the y-axis, uh, there is uh, air. You know, uh, as you're going up on the y-axis uh, from the baseline zero to hundred percent, and on the x-axis uh, from the um, right side of the screen to the left, um, uh, the fluid is from zero to hundred percent. So, hundred percent air is pneumothorax. So, um, normal lung uh, there will be air and some uh, element of uh, you know interstitial fluid, which is normal, uh, as you can see two to three three B lines in a normal um, uh, lung. So 99% air in a normal lung. As you progresses, you know, interstitial syndrome where the thickened septa, again, which is going to give you um, uh, reverberation, artifact, uh, and B lines. And again, interstitial syndrome uh, where you, you have more of a B line and uh, going near the compact B lines territory. Um, still, there is 95% of air there. As you come below the, uh, you know, um, go more towards the fluid part of it. So pneumonia, um, you lose aeration at that particular segment where there is a collapse consolidation or atelectasis, you can see in pneumonia, there is still 10% of air, which give rise to sort of a, a dynamic air bronchograms. It moves, keeps on moving with the inspiration and expiration. Uh, and also there is an air trapping there in pneumonia. Whereas in atelectasis, uh, your air quantity comes down um, because um, the, there is no air trapping. Basically, the, the segment has collapsed because there was no air. Uh, to begin with. So uh, uh, it is just 5% there. And the end of the spectrum is pleural effusion, where, is, uh, where there is uh, completely uh, filled up with the fluid, uh, that particular um, area, which is basically the uh, by the virtue of gravity on the basis of the lung. So that's the air fluid uh, ratio curve. Um, diagnosing pneumothorax. So this is a diagnosis of air within the air when we know that air is not a good uh, conductor of the ultrasonic waves. So uh, uh, it's uh, quite tricky. So uh, again, it's it's all about the artifacts, artifacts and artifacts. So how we diagnose it. So all the signs and uh, signs of the pneumothorax are absence of the pleural sliding. So um, you don't see pleural sliding. So Pleural sliding is abolished in pneumothorax, and so are in the other pathologies as well. So this is not specific to pneumothorax, but it is one of the sign of the pneumothorax. Then you get an A prime profile, um, or you'd like you might choose to say it as an A profile. A prime profile. Uh, the word that terminology has been picked up from the blue uh, protocol, um, which has been devised by the uh, colleagues in uh, uh, France. Um, and I, uh, this is from the uh, uh, adult emergency medicine. So A prime prime profile is basically absence of B lines uh, and or cometal artifacts. So you do not see any B lines or cometal artifacts uh, whatsoever. So absence of pleural sliding, and then you see A prime profile. When you interrogate that particular area with the M mode, 
um, which is the motion mode of the uh, 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 ultrasonic um, um, uh, scanner, then you can see a barcode or a stratosphere sign, which is pathognomic. Now, if you see this sign, then you're 100% sure that there is air in that particular segment of the lung. And then lung point. So lung point is pathognomic again. So this is uh, nothing but the transitional zone between the normal aerated lung, which is um, uh, which will give you the pleural sliding. And there, there you can see some B lines or maybe cometal artifacts. And then the others uh, 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 and the uh, the other transition to the area of pneumothorax where you do not see pleural sliding and there is an absence of B lines or the cometal artifacts. Right, so this is the um, sort of a, um, um, uh, the tree, uh, diagnostic tree, uh, when, we, when we think about pneumothorax. So you're approaching a baby with this, you know, probe in your hand uh, to answer the question, is there is a pneumothorax in this baby? So what do you look at? So you look at the pleural line, is there is a pleural line? Um, yes, there is a pleural line. Then you talk about the pleural sliding, is there is a pleural sliding, is that pleural, uh, uh, is that, you know, the parietal and visceral pleura is um, uh, uh, moving, uh, so sliding against each other. So the answer to that would be either yes. So if the pleural sliding is present, I'll turn on my video. Uh, right, so um, the, uh, if the answer to your pleural sliding is yes, so parietal pleura, visceral pleura. So if your visceral pleura is moving against the parietal pleura, that's your pleural sliding. So if it is yes, there is no pneumothorax. Pneumothorax is air between the parietal and the visceral pleura. Yeah, so if it is there and sliding against each other, you do not have pneumothorax there. So if the answer is yes, no pneumothorax. And if your pleural sliding is no, um, it could be anything. Uh, so pleura is not sliding. So you don't know if actually there is a visceral pleura there or not. What do you know at this point of time, it is not sliding, it's static. So what do you look for then? Now you look for B lines. Is this static area, which is not moving with the abolished pleural sliding, is there is a B line projecting from there? If your answer is yes, if there is a B lines coming, you know B lines are generated when there is fluid, interstitial uh, fluid or fluid in the alveolus. Yeah, so if you have B lines, Fluids in the interstitium or fluid in the alveolus, basically the lung is there. So if there's a blue line, no pneumothorax. If answer to your B lines is no, you do not see, it's not moving, no pleural sliding, you do not see B lines. So there is no B lines. So what it basically means, there is no alveolus, there is no interstitium. The answer is there is no lung there, there's air. Then um, that's pneumothorax. And then you try to look for the lung point. Now you might be able to see lung point if it, if it is a small or moderate size pneumothorax, but if it is a large pneumothorax, you might not be able to see a lung point. Uh, if you see nothing like it, it's a pathognomic sign. And yes, there is a pneumothorax. And if you don't see it, but you have uh, abolished pleural sliding with no cometal artifacts or B lines, and you see a barcode or a stratosphere sign, that's the sign of a pneumothorax. That's the blue protocol I was talking about, and it has uh, sort of um, given us a diagnostic tree of different uh, um, um, lung pathologies, talking about pulmonary edema, pneumonia, and pneumothoraces. You can see there is an A profile there. I don't know if you can see my cursor. Can anybody see my cursor moving over the screen? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. OK, so, um, so A prime profile, um, so Again, lung sliding, abolished, A prime profile, plus a lung point is a pneumothorax. Without the lung point and you don't see a B, um, um, uh, you don't see a B lines, oh, uh, sorry, you do see a B lines there, then you have to think of other modalities uh, or other uh, uh, pathology. So, um, these are the blue protocol profile definitions. So A profile uh, is anterior lung sliding with A lines, which is normal. A prime is A profile, anterior lung sliding with A lines, but abolished lung sliding. 
B profile is again with the lung rockets. B prime, we don't talk much about B prime in neonatal, uh, um, you know, you go through all the literature, there's not been much mention about the B profile in the neonatal uh, uh, literature, uh, but this is basically B profile with abolished lung sliding. And B profile with abolished lung sliding is not uh, pneumothorax, that's something else. C profile is lung consolidation, and A B profile is when you see A and B profile in different lung zones. Sorry, uh, Abhijit, just one thing to mention, just uh, the, the blue protocol. And uh, when Dr. Uh, Lichtenstein made the blue protocol for the yeah. A profile, just to clarify for our participants, uh, it is different from the AB profile that we talk about, which is kind of A and B profile within the same fields side by side and or kind of transitioning lung. His intention yeah. was to talk about A profile, A dash profile, in the right lung versus a B profile in the left lung. And it kind of, for an adult, meant a possibility that that person may have a mnemonic kind of a, or a kind of a, a B profile secondary to pulmonary edemia, as opposed to the kind of AB profile that we see in transition. So just a slight difference. Yeah. Lovely. Moving on. So we'll see a lot of uh, images today. Uh, I promise there won't be a lot of theory. Um, so, right. Anybody would like to comment on this particular um, right posterior to uh, zone of the lung? It's about question about pleural sliding. Can we see pleural sliding here? No. Excellent. So we cannot see pleural sliding here. So. Um, now, uh, commenting on this particular uh, uh, image here, we can see, you know, the sub, uh, uh, the soft tissue of the chest. This is all the soft tissue of the chest. You can see nice, clear uh, ribs with the acoustic shadowing. You can see a bright, discrete, smooth, regular pleural line, and you can see A waves coming equidistant from it. But you cannot see any projections whatsoever from the pleural line. So there is no pleural sliding. Yeah. So A prime profile. Same thing. So you do not, you just see, uh, uh, as I've described just now, I mean, you do not see any um, cometal artifacts or lung rockets here. Pleural sliding is abolished and you can only see um, uh, A lines. Any comment on this particular one? RP1 area. Um, again, subcutaneous tissue, ribs, acoustic shadowing there. And then you see nice, discrete, smooth, pleural line, no lung rockets or B lines here. It's all A lines coming up at equidistant. A prime profile again. So same again, uh, I have zoomed into that particular area. And now what you can see is, uh, this is from the same uh, uh, baby, uh, you know, the last image you have seen, I've just zoomed in now. You can see a very nice, discrete, pleural line, smooth and continuous. That's the subcutaneous tissue. These are the ribs. And then you can see the uh, reverberation artifact, A lines, coming up equidistant. And the artifacts which uh, Sharif has shown today, uh, the same thing. You can see the mirror image. You can see the mirror image on both sides of the pleura because because there is air, it reverberates. The ultrasound waves is not basically passing beyond this point. It's just bouncing back to the uh, probe. So it's giving you a mirror image artifact. A prime profile, no B, uh, B lines, no lung rockets, and mirror image. This particular image, sorry. You see the, the some of the, you know, similar to be moving around. Would you have to that kind of sliding? Sorry, I can't hear you properly. Uh, you're, bro you're breaking up. Okay, okay. Like, there might be a shadow of a, a B lines which are moving. Maybe I'm wrong. Sorry, I'm so sorry you're breaking up. I couldn't. Okay, 
Can you hear me now? Okay, that's fine. I'll just type my my question. Would you mind just uh, you know putting your question on the chat box? Yes, I will. Oh, I can hear you now. Yeah. Um, okay. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, but you are still breaking up. <laughs> okay, sorry, that's fine. No worries. No worries. Yeah. So um, where I was, it? where was I? Yeah. So this is a truck sign. If you can see the reflection of the rib on both sides of the pleura, is called as truck sign. Um, so mirror imaging, mirror image of the ribs on the both sides of the pleural line is also known as a truck sign. Um, uh, Dr. Abhijit, can you repeat what is truck sign? So if you see this particular image here, so this is a prime profile because you can see a pleura, but there is no pleural sliding. Why no pleural sliding? Um, I don't see lung rockets and I don't see any B lines. Had there been any B lines, it should have been erasing the A lines. So no lung rockets, no B lines, but I can see A lines coming up. Yeah. Okay. Truck sign is when you see the ribs on both sides of the pleural line. So of course you're gonna see each time on the um, you know uh, uh, ribs and the pleural line. But if there is only air, you can see ribs on both the sides of the pleural line. You see what I mean? So mm -hmm. ribs there, again, the artifact, uh, you know, the mirror image here. This is the mirror image of the rib, this one. Yep. Mirror image of the rib. In, so, it's giving an image of four wheels also. Yes. So that's a truck sign. Okay. Thank you. Um, whereas uh, we can see mirror image uh, uh, in the deeper pockets as well, uh, as we have seen this on the last session. So your liver, diaphragm, and then because there is an air here, you can see uh, a, a part of a, um, uh, you know, uh, the liver on both the sides of the uh, uh, diaphragm. You see what I mean? So again, you can see the same vessel coming up and going here, same echo texture on both the sides of the uh, uh, diaphragm. So there is some air here. Normally, normally if there is no air, you should be able to see the blood vessels uh, uh, and the spine on this side. But uh, here you are seeing just the liver on both the sides. So that's a mirror image when you have air, uh, air pockets. Uh, moving on to barcode sign or stratosphere sign. So again, the same baby, same area where you can see the truck sign. I have interrogated that with the M mode. And when you do M mode over the area of the uh, pneumothorax, this is what you get. So straight lines, there is no sandy beach appearance. There is no granularity in this particular area here. So there's no granularity. So it's all straight lines. And it looks, uh, uh, um, uh, it's called as a barcode or a stratosphere sign. And we talked about the T lines as well today. Um, so what are T lines? If you see this particular transitioning lines here, these are the lines. Um, right, so this one, this one. So if you see these transitioning lines, so these are the cardiac impulses that has been transmitted to that particular area of the lung of that particular you know uh, area so it, the scanner picks up this uh, uh, transmitted uh, uh, pulses from the uh, heart because it is transmitted it is called t lines very easy uh, terminology and the way to confirm that you can see uh, with the ecg of the baby it comes with each heartbeat yeah any question here Lovely. Moving on. Um, anyone, anybody wants to comment on this particular image? Yeah, Sharif, go for it. Yeah. Do you want to comment on this particular image here? Yes. This is an amplitude interrogation of the lung. Uh, so uh, again, I can um, uh, 
No, so the video is not playing, but uh, well, I can see that I can see some constant B lines. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it seems to be. I can see air uh, um, A lines as well. Um, so yeah. it's A B profile, uh, and in the M mode down there, I can see some. Uh, it seems like seashore sign. Absolutely. Um, so again, sky. That's the ocean, and that's the sandy beach. Yeah, so you can see the difference. The, the reason I have put it up here is to show you the difference. So this is the granular appearance. It's, it looks very granular, hence the name of the sandy beach. And if you compare that with the next one, which is over the area of a pneumothorax, it looks like straight lines. If that makes things clear for you guys. So just to uh, uh, differentiate a sandy beach from a stratosphere sign. Yep. Um, lung point. So lung point is the most specific sign of a pneumothorax. It's pathognomic, like a barcode sign. This is, again, uh, pathognomic. Uh, lung point is also pathognomic for a pneumothorax because you can see lung, uh, you know, the normally aerated lung transitioning into the area where there is no lung. Uh, it's only air. So... This is what it looks like. And I will also uh, try to, uh, you know, uh, kill some confusion here. I, 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 can, I can see people asking questions in yesterday Nadia's um, session about anterior, posterior, uh, uh, you know, craniocaudal, where exactly uh, the air is going. Um, uh, is it not supposed to go up or anteriorly or cranially? So uh, we'll tackle that as well. So you can see... Um, this is the cranial end, this is the caudal end, um, uh, the uh, anterior aspect and the posterior, uh, as uh, you know, uh, shown by my cursor here. So there's a normal aerated lung, because you can see a nice discrete pleural line. And these are lung rockets, because this is not reaching the end of the screen. Lung rockets terminating somewhere here. You can see, still see the A lines. There are some B lines. Whenever they come up, it kills the A line here. So that's your normal aerated lung. Now, uh, compare to compare that to this particular area here, where you can see pleural line, but you cannot see any lung rockets or B lines. You can only see the A lines. So this is this is a lung point. So normal aerated lung. Um, sorry about that. Um, yeah. So this is the normal aerated lung. And here, where you can't see any uh, lung rockets or the B lines, that's the area of the um, uh, pneumothorax. So this particular area where it is transitioning is called the lung point. Right. Wait, Abhi, so can I ask you a question, if you don't mind? Yes, yes. The previous slide, I was just thinking, because you know, sometimes it's difficult to appreciate the lung sliding. So maybe mm -hmm. this point, I know that clinically is very important, but I'm just talking about this slide. So if you take yeah. the video, I can find that it's it might be difficult for me to appreciate on the right side uh, that mm -hmm. there is no plural sliding. So I would think why this is a, a normal lung on the right side, because I can see A lines. But on the left side, there is a, a bit of um, A and B signs. So maybe this is a lung point for uh, a TTM, for example, because I can't appreciate the, the sliding of the plural. Mm -hmm. So how can I differentiate if it's TTN or pneumothorax only from this slide? Yes, so you interrogate with the M mode. Okay. Yeah. So if you, if you are in a doubt or a con, uh, you know if you are not being able to make out a uh, hundred percent sure that is that particular area is uh, you know sliding or not because sometimes the impulses will also looks like or because this area is moving uh, with respiration it looks like this area is also moving whereas there is no sliding in this area. Um, uh, if you can compare, if you you know if you can compare these two areas with this one. Very valid question about the double lung point because double lung point also looks similar to this. So you interrogate with that that area, particular area with the M mode. You interrogate this area and you interrogate this area. Then you can see sandy beach sign coming up here, whereas you'll get a barcode or a stratosphere sign over here. Okay, thank you, thank you. 
Yeah. And yes, again, I lunch point. A, yeah. Yeah. I have uh, again this uh, similar kind of uh, confusion that I had yesterday. So again, yeah. uh, the pointer is towards the uh, cranial end. And yeah. we can see the air towards the caudal end. So again, I'm confused. So I, I expect the air to be collected in the cr uh, more cranially rather than caudally. Understood. So I'm just, gonna, I'm just going to, I'm just going to deal with that. My, I heard the question yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, um, chest X-ray. So, um, I mean, uh, I'm not very good. I have a confession to admit. I'm not a very good uh, uh, person when it comes to reading chest X-ray, but I can tell you very grossly, there is an area of pneumothorax. Um, uh, where is it? Come on. Yeah. So, Everybody agrees there? There's some air there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. So this is the area where, uh, you know, the pneumothorax is. Now to answer your question, Mayank, and uh, to anybody's mind that's, you know, uh, is being confused about where the air goes. So let's make this, you know, chest X-ray uh, supine. The baby is already supine. I'm trying to just make the chest X-ray supine so that it looks more like a lung ultrasound. Okay. Now the baby is lying supine, and you're gonna do uh, a lung ultrasound in the baby who has got a, um, um, a pneumothorax in this particular area. All right. So we're gonna put a probe there. So with respect to this X-ray lying supine, this will be the anterior part, the upper part, because baby is lying. So upper part of the chest is anterior. That's the caudal end, cranial end, and the posterior. Everybody agrees there? Mayank, do you agree there? Yep. yep. Cool. Now, let's see how we put the probe. There was some confusion about longitudinal, transverse, oblique, you know, <laughs> all sort of terminology. So when you put your probe like this, and there's a multiple ribs coming under the probe, this particular position is called longitudinal position, or you can say vertical. Yeah. And when you are doing it, you know, with probe in this fashion, it's oblique, horizontal. Agree? Yep, yep. So far, so good. Yeah. Okay. Now let's make this supine as well. So th this is how we're going to do the uh, lung ultrasound on this baby. Now that's your probe. And uh, you are putting is longitudinally covering two to three ribs so that one, two, three, you know, at least two intercostal spaces comes into the view. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, when you do that, mind you, this was the, um, uh, baby with a pneumothorax in the basal area and baby lying there. So you can imagine when you are putting your probe, or, you know, longitudinally in this section. Okay, so you're gonna see there is a rim of lung. Can you see the lung there? Because there is a lung markings. Yeah. So you're gonna see some lung here on the cranial end, and on your caudal end, you're gonna see air. Agree? Yeah. I, okay. I agree. Yeah. So now, moving on. This is the picture you're going to get. So anterior aspect, where the sternum would be, posterior, where the spine will be, cranial, you can see the lung there, and there's the area of pneumothorax. Yeah, I can understand this situation, but uh, most of the air leaks, so I would uh, probably I would classify this as an air pocket, and most of the air leaks that occur pneumothorax uh, large enough uh, so they would be uh, they would be kind of uh, uh, regularly distributed to say so th they would not be uh, located at a particular point like this is most likely an air pocket located at the lower part of the lungs but yeah. uh, 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 an air leak uh, otherwise would be um, distributed throughout the pleural space yeah. That in that, that case, I feel uh, yeah, it should ahead. be collected more uh, uh, cranially. 
Yeah. So if 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 your you know air lake is big enough, so it's going to take the entire space. Then yes, it could be everywhere in all the lung zones. But what I am trying to tell you here is, if it is a small pocket of air, you can get this kind of a picture. You know where you can see the lung and the cranial end of it, which goes contrary to our you know conventional belief, because we do chest X-ray sitting upright and air goes up, and there you see. so we be, we tend to believe like that but when you lie down it goes anterior now if it is small enough it could be anterior at the you know mid you know the mid area of the chest in this particular scenario the pocket of air is in the completely in the basal area so you can see scenarios like this is my point i'm trying to make so you can see areas this is not always true you might not be able to see a lung point if it is a big pneumothorax or you can see it's in completely opposite direction you know the pneumo the pneumothorax coming on the cranial side and you know the normal aerated lung here maybe so you can see that i'll i'll show you uh, uh, images of those as well so uh, again answering question to uh, 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 dr sharif so this is what i was talking about so because you do not you know 100% sure that is there is a lung sliding or it happens to me as well so i put a quickly do a m mode interrogation of that particular area so first i did over here which gave me a nice sandy beach appearance or sea shore appearance nice granularity that's your sky that's your ocean and that's your sandy beach and then while being in the same frame i quickly moved my you know uh, the cursor to the area where there is a doubt is there is a pneumothorax and you can see it's visibly very very different it's all straight lines do you agree now yeah that's very obvious yeah thank you yes. thank you yeah. thank you brilliant so moving on again uh mayang this is a particular case we right now have in a unit uh, this baby you can see uh, the baby is already already having a chest strain and you can see a pocket of air there now we can have a number of uh, uh, um uh, sort of um explanations about why this pocket of air is particularly there it's not rising to the again as opposed to the conventional believe it's not going to the anterior uh, sorry upper uh, part of the uh, lung Uh, and and it's big enough to you know sort of compromise the baby this uh, particular pocket of air we have to put in a chest strain so you see what i mean so in, in this particular baby also if you do a scan you're going to see the lung point because there is a lung here uh, so you're going to see a lung point and you're going to see a pneumothorax the transition zone here cranium cordially mm -hmm. yeah yes yes i completely agree lovely I think that's uh, uh, more. About, that's about it uh, about the pneumothorax. And uh, um, as we do more, th these are the signs uh, that you have to be mindful and uh, always interrogate the area with the M mode to be hundred uh, percent sure about the pneumothorax. And the pathognomic sign is always the lung point, which might not always be visible, but uh, barcode or stethoscope sign will always be there. Now moving on to the pneumonia. Um, again lung ultrasound is superior to chest x-ray in diagnosing pneumonia um again it has been validated uh, lung ultrasound sensitivity is 86 to 94% as compared to the chest x-ray which is just about 38 to 76% and you can very well uh, uh, by now uh, uh you know understand why that's the case because you can start seeing uh, you know the consolidated area Uh, from the very beginning of it, chest X-ray might not be able to pick up the consolidations in first, you know, couple of days when it is, uh, you know, evolving phase. So hence, such a low sensitivity there. Pneumonia always progresses through stages, and so are the ultrasound changes. So you have to be mindful of the fact that when you're doing an ultrasound, a pneumonia because it goes through the, you know, initially it will be uh, start consolidating. So you might not be able to see a dynamic air bronchogram. It will be just a static bronchogram to begin with. Then eventually uh, there will be a, uh, you know, uh, slowly the A lines uh, disappears, uh, B lines comes in. There will be a shred sign, and uh, it could lead to a, a, a full blown hepatization, which is basically a tissue like sign. It it, it looks more looks more like a tissue, uh, uh, that consolidated area. so it 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 keeps on evolving and so it is important to do serial ultrasound scans rather than one you know snapshot uh, uh, ultrasound of that particular area 
Um, so uh, again, serial ultrasound is informative and allow us to track the changes that is, is you know, improving or worsening uh, or how it is going. And color Doppler is instrumental in differentiating it from collapse or atelectasis. So we'll talk about the Doppler, uh, uh, the use of Doppler in uh, uh, identifying consolidation, uh, uh, you know, the mnemonic or in infective consolidation as opposed to uh, atelectasis. Um, <clears throat> right. Um, again, talking about the evidence, it's not out, you know, out in the thin air. So uh, we do have evidence about it. So again, coming from the ASPNIC, uh, is focus is helpful, which is lung ultrasound is helpful to detect pneumonia in units and children. So there you go. If somebody asked you, so that's the uh, level of quality of evidence we already talked about, and you know, in I have tried to put some papers in here. Um, we can I, I'll share all the papers uh, in the group, but there is n number of papers which talk about the same thing. Um, um, you know, from Cochrane to European Respiratory Journal uh, um, and the neonatal um, uh, journals with a good uh, impact factors. So um, it is validated. Again. What are the signs in the pneumonia? So if you remember this air fluid curve ratio, um, uh, you can imagine how the signs, you know, uh, as I said, it's a dynamic process, how the signs and uh, ultrasonic um, signs will evolve with the pneumonic process. As you go down this route, where there will be less and less air and more and more fluid accumulation to the point that you get to the point where there is a paranemonic effusion, uh, pleural effusion. So um, uh, the, 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 the signs will also uh, uh, eventually change. So what, what is the first thing that happens? Loss of aeration. So there will be alveolar and interstitial edema because this is an infective process. When you have an infective process, um, um, you know, the interleukin-6 are uh, released, uh, you know, different uh, tissue factors are released. There will be some uh, hyperemia, um, um, uh, uh, what do you call this? Um, um, uh, inflammation leakage of the uh, uh, capillaries, so you you end up with the alveolar and interstitial edema. It will lead to air and fluid bronchograms. Air bronchograms, yes, because that area will start collapsing. Fluid bronchograms, yes, because it's a hyperemic area. There will be a fluid leakage, capillary leakage, uh, leading to the fluid bronchograms, as it is an infective process. There will be a shred or a fractal sign, because as that process evolves, it becomes consolidated, um, uh, by which I mean the uh, the air will be, you know, there will be a loss of aeration in that particular area. It becomes more solid, filled with all the um, and fluid in there. So um, uh, you see a irregular consolidated uh, uh, margin, which is a shred or a fractal sign. Then there will be a loss of pleural sliding. Yes, of course. How pleural sliding happens? is when your visceral and parietal pleura moves. Now this area is consolidated, which means it is non-aerated. So it is not moving in with respiration like that. So it's quite solid. So it's not gonna move. So loss of pleural sliding. Lung pulse. Now it's not moving on its own, but the heartbeat, it's gonna make this impulse there. So you will see these T lines, the transmitted cardiac impulses will be seen when you interrogate that area with the uh, M mode uh, uh, of the uh, ultrasound and increased vascularity over the consolidated areas. Here, where the Dopplers becomes very instrumental. Now, you can understand in lung is very you know peculiar or uh, has a characteristic response to hypoxia as opposed to the rest of the uh, organs in the body. So there is a thing called hypoxic vasoconstriction in lung. So when there is a hypoxia, your lung collapses. Um, you know, you're not aerating the lung, collapses, atelectasis, collapse, non-aerated, but because there's a hypoxic vasoconstriction, you will not see increased vascularity in that area. Agree? So you will not see increased vascularity. You're not going to see a lot of Doppler flow there. Now take that as a consolidation in pneumonia. Infective process, um, you know, all the interleukins released, this becomes inflamed the vessels becomes dilated and there will be a more of a blood flow. We need more blood flow because that's a line of defense. You're going to get all the uh, white cell and, uh, you know, army coming in there. 
So the point I'm trying to make is because this is an inflammatory process, your vessels dilate, you have more of a blood flow, and that's what is picked up by the Doppler. And this differentiate consolidated pneumonic consolidations from other collapse or atelectasis. And we'll see example of that uh, um, with the um, uh, uh, images. And eventually, because you know inflammation, a um, lot more blood flowing in there, capillary leakage, Pleural effusion. Now it can be transudative or it will, uh, or it can be exudative. Again, the difference is there. We're going to see that on the image. And um, this is one of the, again, uh, you know, um, a diagnostic uh, tree, uh, you know, done by uh, Kurepa and colleagues. And um, I'm just trying to put it up here. There is, you know, a couple of it on the paper, but I'm trying to put it up here to show you that you know how how it progresses and you start from lung sliding you look at the a lines you see all the signs we're going to talk about it now but uh, this is a, a kind of a stem which we work on uh, when we think about the pneumothorax or pneumonia or atelectasis or rds or any lung pathology for that matter right i'm sure you guys have seen this image uh, i see this video on the last session so bronchograms now, a lot of confusion about static and dynamic bronchograms. We, we do see bronchograms. Yes, there is a bronchogram. Is it static? Is it dynamic? To be honest, it's difficult to find out. I mean, is it, is it, is it a static or a dynamic uh, bronchogram? Best way is to, you know, sort of uh, zoom into the area and see if that bronchogram is moving, you know, with the inspiration and expiration. Again, to explain it further, in atelectasis, which is a collapse of lung because that area is devoid of air. So there is no air trapping in that particular area. So uh, there's no air movement going on in that area. There's air trapping, but there's no air movements going in that particular area. So that will give you a static bronchogram. Dynamic bronchogram is something, this particular consolidated area is not cons uh, you know, collapsed because of the, uh, it is devoid of air. It is collapsed because there's an infective process. It is becoming more solid by the fluids coming in. So it will try to move, which will, give, you know, when you are, the baby is breathing and it will give you a movement of your bronchograms there. So it will, it will generate dynamic bronchogram. Also, because there is a fluid involved there, you will see anechoic areas. So that will be a fluid bronchogram. So if you see here with my cursor, these are, these bright speckles here are all bronchograms air bronchograms now to be honest i cannot figure out if it's, if it is a dynamic at all to me to my eyes it looks static bronchogram here but you can see this areas you can see this blackened areas the anechoic areas you know so these are the fluid bronchograms so when you see fluid bronchogram that is a giveaway because atelectasis will never have a fluid bronchogram it will always be an infective process. It will be a mnemonic consolidation, uh, which will give you a fluid bronco bronchogram because there is no way that you're going to get a fluid and air tripping at the same time in atelectasis. That can only happen in the mnemonic process. At the same image, you can see a shred sign as well because this is a consolidated area. As you can see, these B lines are coming. You cannot make out any pleural line here. There is no pleural line, but you can see B lines coming up from this uh, uh, irregular margins. So that particular area is uh, is the um, uh, consolidated area. Uh, Stretch sign. Right. Also known as a uh, fractal sign. And uh, as I have said earlier, it is irregular border of the consolidated area. This is not a broken or irregular pleural line. It is not same thing. Again, Talking about the shred sign, if you can if you can see in this particular area here, there's an anechoic area, by which I mean it's lighter than this surrounding areas, which has white bright lines coming down, which are B lines, irregular margin, which is a shred sign, and there is an anechoic area. Now, how do I know this particular thing is an atelectasis because of you know? Um, uh, low ventilatory settings or whatever reason uh, or is it a pneumonic process um so we have to interrogate that particular area with the um uh, 
uh, with the Doppler. I'll come about. I'll, I'll talk about the tissue sign as well with the next image. Uh, we'll we'll interrogate that area with the color Doppler. So the pulmonary arterial and venous vasculature uh, is well demonstrated in the areas of consolidation. I have already explained why that happens. So. If you see this particular area of consolidation, that's a solid area of consolidation. You can see, uh, uh, you know, the anechoic areas. There is a, a dynamic bronchograms there. These are fluid bronchograms coming in the picture. These are all moving. Sorry, I forgot to put the video on the loop. But you can see what I mean. So solid consolidated area with the fluid bronchogram, fluid and echoic uh, on the ultrasound, and then the trapped air inside. So uh, fluid and dynamic uh, uh, bronchograms there. And when you do a Doppler of it, so this is what you see, increased vascularity. You can see all the vessels coming up there. Ah, uh, not put on the loop. So, so if you have an increased vascularity, now the question is how do we do, how do we say it is increased vascularity or a normal vascularity? Practically, in a normal aerated lung where there is you know A profile or AB profile, you should not be able to see blood vessels because it are all all our capillaries. You should not be able to see that. Whereas if you have uh, um, consolidation, mnemonic consolidation, and it all dilates. If you are seeing any vessels, if you are seeing any vessels there, then um, that is called as increased vascularity. So if you ask me a number, how many vessels should we see? If you see even one vessels, uh, you know, uh, showing up on your color Doppler, I will say that's increased vascularity. Because if you try to interrogate the normal area of the lung uh, with a color Doppler, you will not see any blood, blood vessel. You should not be able to see blood vessel in a normal, well aerated lung. Again, so area of consolidation, oblique collapse or atelectasis. And then, do you see what I mean? So you see a big chunky vessel there going there. Any question till here? Yeah, in uh, collapse, so uh, we should not see any increased vascularity. In atelectasis, uh, sort of collapse, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because, um, you know, why the collapse happens or why the atelectasis happens is because there is no air. So if there is no air, the lung in that particular area is hypoxic. What is going to do? It's going to do hypoxic vasoconstriction. So do you, when you have a vasoconstriction, are you going to see the vessels under Doppler study? Mm, not really. Um, but if you have a consolidation, vessels dilate. Mm -hmm. So sense? I have another query. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, makes yeah. perfect. So yeah. another query that uh, both the areas uh, of consolidation as well as uh, atelectasis uh, appears hypoechoic. So and hypoechoic usually means increased in uh, fluid content, right? So there should be uh, fluid to be uh, to it be anechoic or slightly hypoechoic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, why should collapse or atelectasis should have hypoechoic then area? <laughs> Not necessarily, not necessarily. So uh, now uh, with the terms hypoechoic and anechoic, hypoechoic is relative. In ultrasound, it can be anechoic or it can be hyperechoic. So anechoic, black, hyperechoic, white. Anything in between is all relative. So it could be hypoechoic, uh, the atelectic atelet, uh, area, to answer your question, the atelectic area can appear hypoechoic. Now, hypoechoic compared to the, you know, its adjacent area where there is a B lines. Mm -hmm. the, mm. If there is a B line, it's adjacent area. Yeah, it's because there will be some amount of fluid anyway in the lung, isn't it? Because we see two to three B lines normally. So, say suppose there is a athletic area and the nearby area is a normal uh, lung, then the, uh, the normal lung from where the B lines are projecting are hyperechoic, and the area just nearby to it. 
which is you know um, uh, uh, atelectatic will appear hypoechoic to this hyperechoic area it's relative mm. okay mm. now you can argue can it be anechoic highly unlikely it should not be anechoic okay it should not be dark black yeah okay right so um the end of the spectrum for the uh, pneumonia is when you get uh, you know syn mnemonic um effusions pleural effusions now pleural effusions could be because of a pneumonia it could be because of you know um more aligned um, malpositioned uh, uh, long lines central catheters uh, it could be because of uh, uh, very unlikely in neonatal population but you know uh, hemothorax uh, you can see that in pediatrics but all that leads to pleural effusion again any fluid is black blood is black when it is like immediate but later on blood becomes hyperechoic like in ct scan in the uh, uh, head as well and um, so at initial uh, uh, onslaught uh, when there is a bleeding it's black any fluid black but blood becomes whiter as you know it matures uh, uh, as the day progresses so um so pneumonia will have uh, exudative pleural effusion and um, uh, um, there will be absence of a pleural sliding understandably because there is a consolidated uh, area there will be a quartz sign we have talked about all these signs uh, we will 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 recap those again with the images there will be a sinusoidal sign uh, with the m mode interrogation of the quartz sign area there will be a jellyfish which is nothing but the lung flapping on the fluid is jellyfish curtain sign uh, is again lung coming in the view and going away from the view is the curtain sign on the lung ultrasound and again lung ultrasound is a, a very sensitive in detecting pleural effusion it is, is is more sensitive than chest x ray because it can detect less than 5 ml of effusion which is much much more uh, sensitive than uh, the uh, conventional chest x ray which needs around 100 to 150 ml of uh, fluid to be detected and um this has sort of become a bible for me now so uh, again uh, you know the recommendation point number 19 is a uh, uh, lung ultrasound is helpful in detecting uh, pleural effusion in neonates and children so this is uh, uh, what the pleural effusion look like anechoic only fluid so there is no tissue there it's anechoic that's your collapsed lung and uh, i will show you the uh, the the video of it as well the flapping uh, of the lung uh, you know uh, the lung in the uh, the pleural uh, effusion or the fluid uh, is the jellyfish shine and if you see here this is your liver and this is your lung you know uh, just ignore the bright uh, bronchograms here the rest of it looks similar isn't it so ideally the lung shouldn't look like this so this is called hepatization as in like it looks more like liver and hepatization is also called as a tissue sign it looks more like a tissue now yeah so your liver and your lung looks similar okay so um uh, so that's a tissue like or hepatization sign when you interrogate that area of pleural effusion with the m mode then you see a sinusoid sign yeah um sorry um if you are listening to a background noise of my little one I'm, i apologize uh, from my end <laughs> um um right so uh why the sinusoid sign is created now that's your subcutaneous uh, uh, or the uh, soft tissue of the chest wall um so this particular area is a soft tissue which you see here and then your ultrasound waves goes through the uh, uh, fluid so it appears anechoic which is here and then because your lungs are moving uh you know up and down uh, in this uh, pleural effusion so inspiration expiration inspiration expiration inspiration expiration gives you a sinusoidal sign quartz sign again is nothing uh, it's if you draw imaginary line that's a ribs 
and parietal pleura, visceral pleura. So that becomes a quad margin. So that's a quad sign. And you interrogate in this particular area with the M mode for the sinusoid sign. And um, again, the same, same thing. Those are the ribs coming in the picture as you're interrogating at the point of the rib and inspiration and expiration going on. An echoic dark black area, that's a fluid. This is your uh, soft tissue of the uh, chest. And that's a lung coming in the picture and going away, giving you a sinusoid sign. Curtain sign, so lung is absent. So expiration, so you only see fluid. Inspiration, lungs comes in and uh, you know um, uh, it comes into the view, basically um, uh, making the pocket of uh, liquid look smaller. So that's a curtain sign. It's like a curtain, it comes and goes, it opens and closes. Jellyfish sign, again, we have talked about this. It's a flapping movement of the lung in the fluid. So you can see the tip is flapping about. So that's your jellyfish sign, you know, like the tentacles of the jellyfish that moves when it swims. So that's what it is. Again, we can talk about the tissue sign as well. The lung looks same like a liver. So that's a tissue sign. Yeah. And right, so moving on the spine sign, because ultrasound waves, you know, loves fluid, it hits air, it loves fluid. So it goes, uh, there is no or minimal attenuation of the wave or um, yeah, minimal attenuation or absorption of the wave. So it goes, you know, all the way to the end of the baby. So what do you see when there's a pleural effusion, you can see the spine. So um, that's your spine coming in the picture. So that's a spine sign. Right. So what kind of an effusion it is, how you can determine that. So uh, transudative effusions are always anechogenic and they are non-septated. You don't see a septate one. I had a beautiful video. Maybe I'll try to show it on a next one because I couldn't get it um, downloaded from my scanner, but I really want to share that with you people um, where we have seen septated, you know, um, uh, exudative effusion with fibrinous strands hanging around, flapping around, uh, which will make it very clear for you guys to differentiate transudative. So what we have seen so far is transudative. You cannot see any strings or, uh, you know, uh, or, or septas. So um, transudative effusion. In pneumonic process, it begins as a transudative. As I said, it is, you know, it's a dynamic process. It begins as transudative, but eventually uh, it might uh, uh, get converted to exudative one, where you can see complex non septated, or I have a lovely video of which is a septated one, and it becomes echogenic. There will be a debris uh, in the effusion, which are very highly echogenic. Uh, those are actually fibrin debris. And hemorrhagic, again, it becomes echogenic in the later, you know, as the day progresses, as the blood matures. But initially, when it bleeds, you know, at that point of time, if you're doing echo, it looks more like a, a, any other fluid, an echoic. Um, pulmonary hemorrhage. So I have kept it at the last. And... Um, and I do not have a video to show you about the pulmonary hemorrhage. Uh, but uh, again, uh, uh, I promise you that I'll show you a pulmonary hemorrhage because I've encountered only one uh, where I have did a scan, uh, you know, uh, of that particular baby. So um, the clinical context is the key. You're not going to see any specifics, you know, any sign which is specific for pulmonary hemorrhage. Like there is no pathognomic sign which you see uh, on a scan and you can say, oh, this baby has got a pulmonary hemorrhage. No, there is none. Because again, if you, if you see or remember this air fluid curve ratio, when you bleed, you know, yeah, when you bleed into your lung, you are basically filling up with a fluid. So, and then that blood will trigger the inflammatory process as well. So you can imagine you will have a broken pleural line. 
uh, you can end up uh, getting a consolidation because blood is a good culture medium. So you can have infection, infective process there. Um, you will, uh, you know, from the A lines, it will progress to B lines, um, uh, um, uh, compact B lines. Uh, it can start with subpulmonic consolidations uh, and progresses to full blown consolidations. So there is no particular sign which which will uh, will tell you that this is pulmonary hemorrhage. So clinical context, you know, the clinical background becomes the key here. Uh, uh, knowing the baby is there is a you know added risk of a hemorrhage in this particular baby. You know, large duct. Um, uh, you know, baby with a large duct um, uh, and suddenly deteriorated. Um, uh, but there is there is no particular sign there. So it is, is mostly um, you know uh, the clinical background which will guide you there. And hence, it is not in the aspenic. So they haven't recommended uh, uh, lung ultrasound as a modality to diagnose pulmonary hemorrhage. What you can do with the lung ultrasound is you can you can track the progress. You know, you can see how the lung looks like. Uh, you know, it, as I said, the blood is a good culture medium. There's always an added risk of a sepsis, consolidation, pneumonia. So you can track all those changes um, uh, uh, by the serial ultrasound. But as a diagnostic modality, because when you bleed, it's going to come up from the ED tube anyway. So you're going to go, you're going to know that when you see that. Um, so rather than diagnosing pulmonary hemorrhage, the ultrasound is instrumental in uh, uh, in monitoring of the disease uh, and you know tailoring your uh, treatment accordingly. So um, papers have started coming out. Uh, um, uh, on the pulmonary hemorrhage as well, and I'm sure we will come up with uh, you know uh, permutations and combinations of signs uh, in lung ultrasound to you know sort of indicate um, you know if you see this um, constellation of signs, maybe uh, uh, this indicates more towards the pulmonary hemorrhage. But as of now, uh, there is none. Um, uh, there is no pathognomic sign there. So you do we do have studies uh, which have started coming in. Um, uh, so, um, and hence I do not have many, uh, images or videos to share. I do have one, which I will do, uh, share with you in the upcoming sessions. Um, so, um, I think that's it, uh, from the pulmonary hemorrhage perspective. Um, we'll, we'll run through some practice slides now. Um, I'm mindful of the, uh, time as well, but, uh, we'll quickly go through this, um, and feel free to, uh, you know, uh, come in and uh, comment. Right, if anyone wants to comment in this particular um, uh, video here. Okay, I can see with a go. Yeah, go for it, Doris. So I can see the plural. There yeah. Is plural sliding. Yeah. I can also see some so plural consolidation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I can see lots of B lines. Yeah. And I think some comet tails. So it's, it's, I can think some faints. I saw some A lines. I think those were A lines, but I think I would say this is predominantly a B profile. Yeah. Um, do you, want, do you want to comment on this particular area? I was pointing at that. Um, like it looks quite irregular. Is it so plural consolidation? This area is that so plural consolidation? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, um, so it is a stretch sign, yes. So it is a stretch sign. So that's the area of uh, consolidation here again, collapse oblique consolidation so um i'm not committing at this point of time if that is a um, you know a area of a mnemonic consolidation so i can see and again uh, uh, to our, you know uh, to sort of stress here my uh, so what i meant by hypoechoic being relative so if you see all these white lines these are very bright but if you go and focus in this particular area it looks a bit you know hypoechoic compared to the rest of the area here if you see what I mean. Yeah. So, Thank you. so uh, 
Yeah. So, uh, uh, so this yeah. is not an equic. It is not like this. This is. It is not like black like this. But it is hypoequic. You know, compared to the rest of the uh, uh, B lines coming up from the lung. So broken pleura, yes. And there is a shred sign here, which is not pleura, which is a irregular margin of the consolidated area. Now let's interrogate that uh, uh, with the M. Yeah. Are there some uh, air as well as fluid bronchogram? There is sorry. Are there some fluid as well as uh, air bronchograms in that? Um, so there, there, there is an air bronchogram. Yes, yes, there is an air bronchogram. And um, fluid bronchogram. Um, not. I can't really say there is a fluid bronchogram here at the moment. If you are, if you are referring to this particular area, sorry. If you are referring to this particular area here. Uh, no, uh, slightly uh, onto the left when it uh, moves. Yeah, like that. So this particular area. You no, you feel it. On the left. On the left here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somewhere there. <laughs> Right. Okay. So let, 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 let's see how it looks in the color, uh, color Doppler. Sure. Anybody wants to comment on that? There is uh, no vascularity on this one. We don't Absolutely. see any increased vascularity. Yes. Yes. So this is not a fluid bronchogram here to answer your question. That's an area of in a small segment of the lung, which has collapsed at lactate at this point of time here. And same goes here as well. So thank you. If you just, yeah, if you just look at it, you might feel like, oh, that's an area of consolidation stretch sign pneumonia. So before you commit yourself that this is a consolidated area with pneumonia, always do a color Doppler and it will give you the answer. Yeah. Make sense? Yes. Yes. Oh, sorry, yes. I, I, um, sorry, I'm not entirely clear. So there is no increased vascularity. So what does this mean? Is this um, a consolidation or atelectasis? Atelectasis. So this is atelectasis because there is no increased um, vascularity. Okay. Yes. Yes. Because if 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 it has to be a uh, you know uh, infective process leading to consolidation, then I would expect there to be increase in vascularity there. So is that still a shred sign? Because I thought shred sign was when there's consolidation. I had the yes. same question. Yes. Um, again, these terms are so, you know, uh, used uh, like, uh, I don't know how to say this. Um, that's why I always say collapse oblique consolidation. So um, um, the shred sign can be, as I said, you know, um, how do I put it? So it is an irregular margin. So when you when you have an atelectatic collapse, again, it's a collapse, you can have an irregular margin there. Okay, so you 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 can get a shred sign there. You can you can get a fractal sign there. It is irregular margin of that collapsed area. Collapse consolidation. So I always use the word collapse oblique consolidation. You until unless you do a Doppler and see that there is an increased or no, you know, uh, yeah, increase in vascularity, you can never be sure that um, uh, is that area is consolidated, I mean, infective consolidation or not. Are you getting me or am, am, I, am I making you more uh, guys more confused? Thank you. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Very clear. Can I ask now, um, uh, sorry, Abhijit, about uh, yeah. uh, blood like Doppler? Yes. Shall if your uh, voice is blood breaking up? Sorry, would you describe that as a Doppler, uh, uh, like increased vascularity? Sharif, I didn't get the first part of your question. Can you repeat again? In that Doppler, uh, do you consider, if you play the video, do, do you consider that as increased vascularity? On this particular one, no. This one? This one, no. You can't see vessels coming up there. Fine. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody wants to come in on this?
Can I? Yes, go for it. Uh, diagnosis or description? <laughs> um, I would say description. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, 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 this is a, the blue, blue line is not uh, clearly defined. It's uh, like blurred. Yes. It is probably um, uh, an area of uh, which is uh, an echoic area, um, just where the blue line is being broken down. And there is also a movement of this piece of uh, blura in and out, or maybe lung tissue. Um, this is um, very much similar to the uh, sign that you've shown us, uh, you've shown us, shown, shown us earlier, uh, when there was a blur effusion, where the, there is a curtain and uh, there is a, a jellyfish uh, sign. Uh, can I come in, Jaruddin? Um, so, uh, again, the, I haven't put this slide to confuse you guys. I have put this slide to. <laughs> I have put this slide to show you the difference of, you know, different consolidations, collapse consolidations. So here, now this particular baby has got RDS. Now rib, rib, rib. I can't see acoustic shadow because there's a compact B lines. Yes, you're right. We cannot see a very bright, discrete, regular plural line. Rather, it's a smudging effect. And these are the subpulmonic consolidations. I have zoomed in here. So this is how it looks. I cannot see any A lines whatsoever. It's all compact B lines. Yeah. So uh, again, this is not lung moving in the uh, pleural effusion because I can't see any effusion here. Subcutaneous, uh, uh, not sorry, not subcutaneous, soft tissue. So that's your soft tissue, ribs. Yeah. And that's your pleural line. So there is no fluid here. And these are all the suppulmonic consolidations. And um, uh, this is the area of acoustic shadowing. And this is uh, suppulmonic consolidation and all the B lines, compact B lines. So this is RDS. Now again, this is subpulmonic consolidation. You don't see you don't see a shred sign there because these are micro micro consolidations or atelectasis or collapse, however you want to name that. So it's a small minute uh, um, uh, uh, collapse of the uh, uh, lung in the RDS. So this is this is a classical sublimonic uh, uh, consolidation in RDS. So Happy. We, we do not call that threat sign, right? Because it's smaller. No, it's no, 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 no. This is this is not a threat sign. No. Okay. Yeah. Um. Next one. Who wants to come in? May I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Uh, this seems to be a double lung point. The uh, the cranial part uh, is well aerated, while the caudal part seems to be a little uh, wet. So this is a double lung point for me. Excellent, excellent. Again, not to confuse you guys, this, this is just as a recap. As I said, we'll do it in a slightly different manner. Um, so yeah, bright, sharp pleural line, and you can see smudging of the pleural line there if you uh, uh, know what I mean. So that's that's smudging. You cannot make our plural line very discreetly here. So it's all B lines, compact B lines here. Here, um, it's bright and discreet. And then you have some A lines, uh, sorry, uh, lung rockets coming in here. Uh, A lines you can see here. This A lines continue still here. And because you have B lines coming, this A lines get obliterated. You don't see A lines in that particular area. So B line always obliterates or abolish A lines. So this is a classic of a uh, double lung point. And you can see this commonly in TTNB, uh, but you can see this in RDS as well when the baby is you know, post surfactant, when baby is improving. Um, uh, and basically, again, air fluid ratio, if you see, uh, air fluid curve, if you see. So uh, it is self-explanatory as you know, the aeration improves uh, um, you know, from a RDS state, some areas will get improved earlier than the other. You can see double lung point in uh, TTNB. That's the pathology. It's it's a fluid-filled lung, but it's patchy and non-homogeneous, unlike the RDS 
So you can see some well aerated and some loaded lung and hence the double lung point. Right. Um, anybody on this one? Can you go for it? Can yeah. 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 Um, yeah. It's a normal lung. Excellent. If you want to describe the uh, video a bit. Sure. It's um, a straight, clear, uh, plural line, comet mm -hmm. lines, and you could see A, uh, a lines. Yes. Excellent. So why I have put this slide again is because to show you how the lung rockets looks different from a B line. So if you see, um, these are the lung rockets. It, it is not reaching the end of the screen and it is not obliterating the A lines. So these are the small lung rockets coming. It also aids you in uh, uh, um, sort of differentiating or uh, is telling you that there is a plural sliding going on there. So those are the lung rockets not erasing the A lines and not reaching all the way to the uh, bottom of the skin. Hence, it is not a, 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 a B line. Yeah. Can I uh, add? Is there uh, a yep. truck, sign? truck sign or a mirror image? Uh, excellent. Um, let me go back to it uh, and undo that. Right. So, um, so this is a this is a mirror image reflection of the ribs here. You're absolutely right. This is a truck sign. So, um, if you see a truck sign without the B lines or the lung rockets, um, you think of pneumothorax. Pneumothorax. Excellent. Yeah. Just uh, just one question about the previous extra, uh, uh, sorry slide. You see the lower part dark. So here, if I change my frequency, decrease my frequency, will it be clearer for me? In the lower part. It, sh it should make it clear, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Guys, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. Anybody wants to comment on this particular slide? Yeah. Regular. Um, apart from this middle area, just right here, um, I can call that a shred sign. Yes, okay. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Plural sliding. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you um, can see B lines here. Yeah. All these B lines, and on the left side of my screen, I think these are A lines. Sorry, uh, it's moved. Uh, yeah, uh, is it Doris who is speaking? Yes, yes. Yeah, Doris, when we see consolidation, again, uh, to make it clear to the uh, group, when we're when we talking of consolidation, when you can already see consolidation, then we don't necessarily have to talk about the uh, sliding at that point of time. Uh, yeah, because if you're seeing the consolidation, you know there is a lung which is consolidated, isn't it? So, um, we, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, basically if there is a consolidation, there is a lung there. So when we talk about the, uh, you know, the plural sliding from the perspective that, you know, is there is a visceral pleura there or not? That's the whole idea. Yeah. Just to, just to make sure that there is a lung there. So if it is sliding, we know that there's a lung, which is like, you know, the visceral pleura is sliding. If, you, if there's a consolidation, you know, there is a you know, lung, which is consolidated. So um, once you say that there's a you know, stretch sign or there's a consolidation, uh, uh, we can assume that there is a uh, there will be a plural sliding. There might not be plural sliding, but uh, that will not uh, it will not indicate towards the pneumothorax or anything else because you know there is a consolidation already. Okay. Make sense? Yeah, 
Um, can yeah, I ask, yeah. is there a double long point here? Because on the left of the screen, I can see A lines. Mm -hmm. And then here is uh, at this um, B line. So it's, can you call this, I don't know. I mean, uh, if you strictly go by the image, yes, you can call it. Uh, but right now we are trying to deal with the consolidation in this particular case, as in like in this particular baby. So, uh, um, uh, um, uh, so you can see, you know, double lung points in a TTN baby and who has, you know, developer infective focus at some point, of, uh, you know, some part of the lung. So yes, um, uh, this is not the best slide to comment, you know, uh, on the lung sliding, given that how, because this baby is moving a lot and, you know, we are trying to capture that particular area. Um, but if you can see, this is nicely, one area is well aerated and the um, other one uh, is having a lot of B lines, then you can comment on double lung point. But here, what we can see is one area is well aerated. That's fine. The other one we are seeing is only the consolidated area, isn't it? We don't know how the rest of the lung looks like. So this might be a baby who has, you know, absolutely normal lung otherwise, and has got pneumonia uh, and, and is having, you know, consolidation in that part. And when you have consolidation, you're going to see a lot of B lines because there is fluid. Yeah. Uh, so I will, I will. Yeah. What is this uh, broad uh, vertical uh, acoustic shadow coming in the center? You mean this one? Uh, I think below that. Uh, uh, is that is that this one you're talking about here? No, no, no. Uh, to the left. Here. No, the dark shadow just coming in the center. Um. Oh, vertically. Vertically. Is that this one you're talking about? No, the other one. There. This one. Yeah. This one, You're right? Right. Okay. That's that's your acoustic shadowing. So if you see, uh, that's your rib there, and none of the ultrasound waves are coming here. So to the scanner, it looks like there is nothing because all your waves are going back. No, yeah. Compared to compared to the other rib. It's looking quite broad. That's why I got a little confused. Uh -huh. Okay. No, th that's a rib only. Yeah, that's a rib only. Thank you. Um, again, we're going to interrogate that area with the Doppler. Do you see vessels? Yes. Yes, some vessels. Yes. What do you think that is then? consolidation no absolutely because now you can see that you know, uh, the lung otherwise looks okay in the other you know segments as well there is some b lines but you can see a lines even in uh, these areas you know the b lines comes up but there are a lines but this particular area is the area of uh, interest where there is a consolidation and and it looks to me like there is some kind of a pneumonia going on there yeah uh, Abhijit, can I ask you a quick question? Sorry. Yes, please. You know, in RDS, we we uh, it's very common to see supraleural consolidation. Okay. Yes. And uh, if we put the Doppler on that, are we expecting to um, find increased vascularity? And then no. Okay, that 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 makes sense uh, because yeah. it will differentiate between pneumonia and um, yeah. So. The subpulmonic consolidations, if you're going to apply color doppler on that, you're not going to see anything. No vessels. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. This one is a sort of a giveaway, isn't it? Can I comment? Yeah, yes, please. Go ahead. Uh, I think we see an uh, hypoechoic area with a shred sign in the right of the screen and yeah. multiple yeah. B lines on the on the left of the screen. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. I think we um, have air bronchograms also. Yes. 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 The, and those are dynamic. Hypoechoic area. Yeah. Yeah. And and the blood. Ah, uh, so 
increased viscosity. Pneumonia. Yeah. Excellent. I know you all know this now. No bamboo. pural sliding. Um, bamboo spine, um, no pural sliding. Uh, um, I can't see lung rockets, B lines, pneumothorax. If we can get a NAM modes, <laughs> that would even be better. Absolutely. So, as I said, the more and more you see, uh, you will start recognizing the pattern. And Doris, here I would say this is. Anybody? We have seen this slide, I think, already. This is a uh, lung point. Mm -hmm. Aerated. And, yeah, lung point. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> Again, I'm not good in x-ray. So I did an x-ray. This is a very recent case. And uh, I apologize um, uh, because I don't have a very good video because I made a video out of a video. But nonetheless, we can, we can get all the information on that. But anybody wants to comment on this particular x-ray? What do you think, basically? You don't have to describe it, but elephant in the room. Right, upper lobe collapse. Yay, absolutely. Excellent. So that's what or, we thought. It's or consolidation, no? Or consolidation. Why not? That's what we thought. And we approach with the scanner. And this is what it looks like. So R1. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will not take a lot of time, so I'll tell you. Uh, apologize for the poor quality of the video because it's a video of the video. Um, but where is the collapse? I don't see any collapse here. Do you? I can see mirror image, you know, rib and ribs comes up here, comes up here, comes up here. And then I see nice A lines. Yeah. Um, maybe occasional B lines, but Nothing like collapse here. Agree? Yes. It's not a plural effusion on, 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 the, right, on the left. Uh, here you have your answer. So again, we are still in the R1. So I tilted my probe trying to find where that thing gone. It, it looks solid in my x-ray, but I can't find it on the lung ultrasound. So I tilted my probe a bit. So you cannot, see, so you can see hard. I'm still on the right side, but I have you know, sort of tilted it, try to find, you know, this collapse oblique consolidation, atelectasis, whatever. And I see this. Any comment? What is this? Chimus. Absolutely. So there you go. You know, when we did that x-ray and there was a lot of buzz and, you know, a discussion about, oh, it, that baby was ventilated. You can see the ET tube there, quite high up. But uh, it was like, oh, the tube is high. We should push it in. Uh, I'll go back to the chest x-ray. Yeah, so tube is high. You know, uh, we should be putting it down a bit uh, because uh, there might be an area of uh, collapse there. Um, uh, um, so uh, we should be doing right side up nursing, uh, some physiotherapy and whatnot. I mean, that's the most logical thing. We always have done that and we always do that based on this x-ray. Now, I wanted to do a lung ultrasound and see for myself, like, what exactly is that? Because it could be either at lactases because the tube is high up and it's not getting well aerated one of the reason, or it could be a consolidation mnemonic process, um, uh, which is most of the time somewhere here, uh, most of the time it should be somewhere here, as we have seen uh, um, in cases, but it is here, but it can happen there as well. So, uh, or maybe it is not draining properly. So we need more of physiotherapy, you know, uh, uh, so it has collapsed or something. So when I did an uh, ultrasound and it gives us an answer, voila, so that is, Thymus. So what do you do about it? Nothing. Let the baby at rest in peace. Right. Um, anybody wants to comment on this one? Can I? Yeah. So this is just plural effusion mainly. And I think this is the lung margin, which is giving an undulating appearance moving back and forth. Yeah. Brilliant. So that's your pleural effusion there. Um, that's a pleural effusion. And uh, your um, visceral pleura has come down here. So from here, you're getting all your, uh, you know, uh, B waves coming down. 
um, those are your ribs um, and that's a pocket of fluid there. Looks like transitive at this point of time. Lovely. And you can see some A lines also. Anybody wants to comment on this? It's a bit tricky. I'm not trying to have fun, but I can't stop myself. <laughs> this will be covered in upcoming sessions. So, um, Does pleural fusion with sine wave, sine, sine sorry, sine Yes. Wave. So, uh, um, uh, no, Leila. So exactly, this is my point of putting this here okay. to, yes. no, to show you mirror image. This is the diaphragm. If, this if is the diaphragm, absolutely. Do. Okay. Yeah. So um, why there's a tissue like uh, thing uh, below the diaphragm? Yeah, yeah, I'll come to that. So um, uh, the reason why I have put it here is to show you how different it looks, a pleural effusion, when we are trying uh, 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 you know, to compare it with the diaphragmatic excursion. So lung ultrasound is also used to sort of uh, um, see the diaphragmatic excursion for various reasons. I'll not go into the details of that. Um, uh, it will be covered uh, by one of our speaker. Um, uh, so I'll not go into that. The, uh, the point I'm trying to make here is to show you the difference, how different uh, it looks. So, um, so this is your liver. This is your uh, diaphragm. And uh, uh, we have done the uh, M mode interrogation of that area. So to see how the diaphragm is you know, moving up and down. So any up and down movement in an M mode, as we have seen in pleural effusion, it will give you a sinusoid sign. So this is with inspiration, the diaphragm is uh, you know, uh, uh, going, uh, coming down and with expiration, the diaphragm is going up. So it gives you a sinusoid sign. The difference from the pleural effusion here is, yes. so because your, M mode interrogation is through the liver and there is no fluid. You don't see an echoic black color. Okay. That's how it looks in pleural effusion. So this is the an echoic area, which is pleural effusion. So it looks black. And that's your undulation of the lung with inspiration and expiration. Looks like a sinusoid sign. But whereas when you do a diaphragmatic excursion, it looks like this. And the, the time is slight. Um, was there a pleural fusion or just A we see? The slightly Sorry, Laila, can you repeat yourself again? The thymus, the thymus, uh, the, the slide of the thymus. Um, you, you could see dark uh, aquatic air, air, area. That's uh, uh, fluid or just air we see? On the thymus. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. This one? Yes. So what we uh, no, we are not seeing fluid. And again, uh, uh, because this is a video of the video, it looks a bit weird in terms of, you know, the gain and the, uh, the, the how bright or dark it looks here. Uh, mm -hmm. But trust me, uh, it, it looks like a tissue, like, okay. like, like you see the liver. Mm -hmm. it, it, it looks exactly like that. It, look, it, it, it looks like a solid tissue. Um, the way it is looking here is because, you know, it's a video of a video. Um, yeah, because I couldn't uh, download the uh, images. If, uh, you know, next time, if I can, I'll definitely show you the, uh, the one which you have acquired on the scanner. Thank you. Okay. Right. So, right. Um, I think this is... Uh, 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 in terms of sessions or lecture, this is my last one. Um, um, I'll be with you guys in terms of, uh, you know, reviewing the images. But the idea is, you know, uh, with the focus, not only the lung ultrasound, with the entire focus thing, the point of care ultrasound, um, we have to, you know, incorporate this technology as an extension of the senses. You know, we as a doctors, we have always used our stethoscope, you know, as an extension of the, our senses. We, we always listen to... Uh, and, and different pathologies, um, be it the chest, heart, or abdomen. And, and I think the time has come where that needs to be, I would not say replaced, but aided by the uh, stethoscope to give you more information. Um, people ask me, you know, in my unit also, uh, um, uh, as in all the units, there will be some uh, for the modality and some no, I would not say against, but skeptical about the modality. And the question I always face is like, 
you know, what changes when you do a lung ultrasound, you know, um, uh, how it changes management. And the answer to that is like, you know, maybe nothing. It, it doesn't changes anything. Uh, like how many chest X-rays you do changes management. It doesn't, you know, yeah. you have a pleural effusion, you, baby CRP has rose, you, you know, baby is septic, you have done, you, or you have seen, you know, some sort of a, uh, fluffy opacities or consolidation on a chest x-ray what do you do you don't do anything I mean, you just continue with the antibiotics and the care but you know that there is a focus in the lung so uh, you know maybe a slightly longer days of antibiotics and stuff like that so the lung ultrasound is also same thing um it it gives you more information it, it, it you know it, it it gives you more information to make more informed decision in uh, uh, tailoring the treatment of the baby so um so to answer to that question is like, yeah, it might not change anything, but it gives you more information. Maybe not to act on it, rather not to do anything about it. Most of the times we, we go and do too many things with the baby. Sometimes we don't have to, like I showed you in the case of uh, um, uh, the thymus. So did it, you know, uh, have we done anything, uh, you know, in terms of management with that baby? No, we haven't done anything because we know we don't have to do anything. Because now we have more information that that particular area is just a thymus and you can just ignore it and let the baby, you know, be at peace. So, yeah. So most of the time you might not change the management. Well, almost most of the time. Uh, uh, and some of the time it, it makes a huge impact on making decisions about the surfactant and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's the idea. It should be the extension of our senses uh, and should be used on a regular basis more frequently. And... I think that's the end of it. Keep calm and scan on. I think an excellent I, session from Abhijit and uh, to kind of uh, say that, uh, again, just an additional point to answer the question of people who say, well, what does a lung ultrasound add? The fact is we get hundreds and hundreds of x-rays, which often don't change management. Not only they give additional handling to the baby, they also give radiation. And, uh, you know, from our perspective, uh, a lung ultrasound, uh, you know, needs to be viewed very much with the same level of, uh, I would say, candor. And that uh, if an X-ray is not going to change our management in a particular situation, why are we getting one done? Uh, in particular, if we can do a lung ultrasound, which is going to give zero radiation, and you know, it, it can be finished in a minute, you know, for the, the relevant areas. So, I think you know, fantastic talk, uh, and uh, just. Uh, Again, to kind of emphasize, so you've seen a lot of lovely, beautiful images that Abhijit has shown us today. So as part of your exam sessions, I mean, a degree of pattern recognition and recognition of some of the images with clinical correlation will be some of the questions. So, you know, it's a brilliant kind of a way to kind of give you an idea of what kind of questions you'll get when you have to complete your, your final uh, kind of uh, assignment, which is the, the MCQ. I'd like to thank you, Abhijit. God bless you. Thank you so much. And I look forward you, to you tomorrow. Lovely. Thank you, everyone.